You can't make change without common sense. You feel me? And people don't have it, so you have to gather a group of people who have that common sense in order to make change. People who know how to think are often the leaders. The people who sell you the illusion don't believe it. It was like a thousand suns hit me. That's how bright the light was. The bright light hit me, and it's when I started getting the downloads. For the next three and a half hours, I'm sitting there going through every philosophical question about the universe I can. Because man and woman has to come together in agreement. That's where it becomes contractual. To say, hey, listen, you're gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, this is how we gonna move, this is how we gonna improve. This is what we gonna eat, this is what we gonna teach, this is what we gonna think, this is what we gonna believe, this is how we gonna build, this is how we gonna operate, this is how we gonna ascend, this is how we gonna scale and expand. But the problem is that we're not really meeting each other's standards because we're not creating standards to be met and we don't know what ours are. We just know that this person is not meeting them. And that's because we haven't defined what those are because we are completely disconnected to the standards. I appreciate my pops for teaching me how to be a guy. From a boy to a man and ultimately back into the natural state of being into a guy. As guys, we're supposed to always move with that higher self. And I have to be able to execute it. Having knowledge is not power, the execution of knowledge is power. Knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Because the only real knowledge you can get is knowledge of self. How important is it for us to just make sure we get together and have high level conversations? Our community needs men like him. More people need to know what's going on. People from our communities can relate. It was nice to see like so many black men in here. All melanated people coming together. In any other city you at, I'm there. Take a special kind of soldier. Take a special kind of soldier. A straight soldier. It take a special kind of soldier. It take a special kind of soldier to take over. Peace family is 19 Keys and I'm back with another high level conversation. Today I'm back joined with a special guest that you all should know. Especially if you watch the episode that we've had. It's going up to 4 million views after this date. And a lot of people have come to me about all of the confirmations that they've gotten since that episode. The expansion and exposure of the mind, thoughts that they had that they had no one to confirm, and having these open dialogues and conversations allow people who are often feel ostracized and often feel like the black sheep, they have now felt like they had a seat at the table in the consciousness, especially when we gave them that exposure. Now, these are conversations that me and my brother have all the time. This is the Blue Pillar 44, the decoder. He takes the intellect, the knowledge of time, perception, observation, decoding, and he calculates. He fine tunes his understanding of things to give you what his understanding is so that you have it in the inner of the depth of your mind so that the signs are no longer foreign to you, but you can read them, you can understand them, you can be in tune with what's divine, and you don't have to be lost because we're often fighting a war where they're trying to shroud us in the darkness to where we cannot see. But when you understand that they can cover your two eyes with the third eye never sleeps, then you are always open to understanding the visions that is in your mind and also understanding the vision of the opposition so that you can change the reality for what's next that's going to be put out there. Now, in our reality, there are always signals, signals of change, signals of opportunity. Right. Some of these signals are high level observations and some of these are low level observations, meaning that they're more obvious than one having to take the deep scrutiny undertaking of research to figure out what's going on. Things such as artificial intelligence is a huge signal, but not just a signal because we've been at AI for a long time. But it's when the tools are utilized in a manner there mass adoption occurs and then the world will be changed forever that's a signal to let you know that the future is here and there's going to be a lot of things that reverberate from that not only that's the signal the signal of demon culture right the occultism the satanist that we see in everywhere the anti-establishment the lack of morals codes 
right structure. We're seeing so many things go through transitional phases in our reality and they're representing different signals to where we're going in the future. The future is the only thing that's uncertain about the world. We can study the past, but you can't study the future. You can predict it. You can do things in the present and now to make sure that whatever you're doing now ends up to the eventual accumulation of a result that we now know as the present. And that's when people will say the future. And so we go back to the whole idea of who controls the future, what is the future. And I want this concept to be stuck on your mind. I wanted you to think about this a lot because as I talk about in my book, Paradigm Keys, The Future Self, I was speaking the other day to someone and they was asking me, you know, what are the things that I do to prepare myself? How did I become who I am? And I had to tell them, the version that I am today is not the one who prepared. The man five, 10 years ago was the one who cared about who I am today. He was the one who decided how much money is in my pocket. He decided how much knowledge is in my mind. He decided right, how healthy I feel. He decided how many friends I have in my network that I can call up. He decided everything about my life. And I'm living out his plans. And 20 years from now, my future self will be living my plans based on everything that I do. So the question becomes back to you, what are your plans? So we're gonna talk about the different dimensions of how you can think things that you can tap in so that your future self is able to benefit from your current self. None other than the blue pill of 44 is going to take us through this wild ride of visionary thought process that allow us to have the accumulative data to make the right decisions daily. And we're going to talk about drugs. <laughs> How you doing, peace, brother? brother. Man, peace. Honest. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Welcome back for another one. Man, I'm excited for this. I'm going to take the glasses off early, in fact, even though, you know, these are the Crown Society frames. Yes, indeed. Let me set that right there and just... So, speaking of signals, right? Because yes. there's a lot that I want to unpack during this episode, you know, um, signals and sigmas, <laughs> yes. if you will. So, I was explaining to you just a little bit before we got on about you know what a sigma was and that was like this idea of this sigma male and then they have sigma females of course because there's always polar opposites uh, opposites so we know what the alpha is of course that's the one and it's always utilized by the greek numerical system right yeah and then you got the betas you know what i'm saying so the alpha and the beta are supposed to essentially kind of be opposites right the alpha is that dominant one that takes that leadership position right and takes the thrones of i'm going to you know run everything right it's more of a loud boisterous energy that dominates the room and the beta is the opposite right it's that person that's you know more laid back submissive um submissive right. you know what we would call in the language of the god soft right but then they have a new one that is more the sigma it's not soft but he's also don't want to be the one that's the loud and the leader because there's so much conflict that comes along with that situation it's the lone wolf if you would think maybe a, a wolverine would be similar to like a sigma Yes. Character type, right? Not nobody to be trifled with. He right. can move on his own accords. He steps out the world of illusions and he has his own thought process of critical thinking and analysis that he goes about the world as he chooses to make his decisions on his daily life. Now, as I was listening to some of these breakdowns of personality types and things of that nature, I never find myself deeply into just one. Right. Mm -hmm. But what I did, and as I found a 19 key the other day, so I want to share this with you first on this camera. And 19 keys is when I have operations or observations that bring me to, you know, the number 19. And it gives me uh, a thought process that sort of awakens something and unlocks something within. Right. Furtherance. Right. right. So, you know, sigma is the 18th letter in the Greek alphabet. Mm. Right. And then you take alpha to one. So I had to add them up to the 19. So and, I, and I came out with the talk which was the 19th letter of the Greek. And what I decided to come up with was the tall male, right? The tall male is a unconventional, right? Style of leadership and going about doing things. So when you combine those two together, being an alpha and a sigma, that's when you get, right? All together, right? So it's that one plus that 18 getting you down to that 19. And it's interesting that it's tall because I'm a Taurus at the same time, yes. right? So it's automatically in line with, you know, who I am. And as I was giving a breakdown, I'm going I'm to share some of these traits about the tall male. And this is one that I believe that should be in the world. 
that people could follow, right, in order to see themselves as an archetype to become and or recognize. Because the more rare you are, the more unrecognized you are by the world, they generalize you and put you in spectrums that they believe you fit in. Right. This is why we like titles, because it makes us familiar with people to easily cast them in a box because mm -hmm. human beings for survival have to recognize things. Otherwise, we feel fearful of them. Right. So the tall personality is an archetype, which is a concept that I blended the alpha and the sigma. It envisions an individual who embodies unique combination of leadership, independence and adaptability with a strong emphasis on balance and harmony and social interactions. Of course, that alpha is not always looking for that balance and harmony when that sigma is. So that right. combination creates a more empathetic leadership style. But the sigma is not always looking for the social interaction. Not either. at all. Right. Not at all. So, so it's the balanced leadership, the independence and autonomy, the adaptability, the diplomacy and negotiation, the strategic thinking, right? Those are sort of like the five core traits when we're talking about the sigma. And, you know, if I think about myself, it just makes all the sense in the world of how I go about doing things, especially kind of like not trying to take the leadership position in the sense that I want to be the dominant leader because I already understand how much conflict that causes and how many issues that arise with it. I want to be a leader, not the leader, right? So my style is a little unconventional in the way I go about doing things because I've seen the alpha fail. I definitely, I can't be a beta. So seeing the alphas fail in the world ran by the so-called alpha mentality, right? It had me thinking differently on what's the best way to go. So that's why the minds of today form more into that tall mentality because we weren't taught, right, the correct way. And the things that we did teach was from the experience of watching the observations of those who considered themselves to be alphas but led us in the wrong direction when people jumped into their pack, right? So now it's the lone wolves but learning how to lead and mix in and move with others so that you have a lone wolf mentality but you've adopted a family and some of those traits that made you a lone wolf to where you were strong, right, dependable, adaptable, resilient, you can now enter that back into this atmosphere, right, of also being a leader when necessary. So I saw that personality foster online during the pandemic, mm. right, where these people were, the Mavericks, they broke from the pack. And then they were isolated, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because they had ideas right. that went against what's considered to be the norm. They definitely wasn't beta because they were able to stand on their own. And they wasn't alpha because they didn't want, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, an entire consortium of people to necessarily follow their steps. They was fostering a demonstration that would now create multiple leaders in people's respective households, communities, and online communities. Mm -hmm. So I, I did make that observation of the lone wolves becoming now the anti-hero becoming the hero. And those people will be looked at as anti-heroes in a normal setting mm. because they're alone, away from the pack, right? These are the people that are often not invited, but when they break off, they'll be like, where you going? Right. <laughs> no, nah, it, it is. We have, if, even if you look at the way entertainment does things, yeah. And what the world is going for, it's the anti-hero that is the most popular. Now, right? yes, absolutely. It's not the hero and the villain. You know what I mean? Because even the villain has to become more sophisticated in the, the appeal, right? So it's like if you go back to look at Marvel movies, you see that their villains are not what they used to be. This dumb person that just tell you they plan. No, right. No, they have like a philosophy behind it. They've yeah. been through some childhood trauma. They have some sort of relatability, yeah. right? And the way that they go about their plans for possibly, even when you look at Thanos, his plans wasn't world domination. It was to create balance. It was it was balancing the world. Right. right? He he came to bring balance, and oftentimes, you know, the one who comes to bring balance is not going to be popular. They're not going to be accepted mm -mm. because you know there are often people that are benefiting from the imbalance. Right. You know what I mean? And, the and alpha. I think the thing about an alpha is it's not a lot of moral implication on what, you know, the idea of being an alpha male is. It's just being kind of like the most powerful, dominant one, but it speaks nothing to the character and the values of the alpha in the sense of his morality in the world. 
Yes. Um, the overexposure to concepts in our society, which people might consider to be alpha male rooted, has led to people branding that as toxic masculinity. Mm. Right. So what does it look like? Can somebody be alpha and that step on someone? Can somebody be alpha and be compassionate? Right. Because this is about, you know, once you like you said, it's about balance. So it is about being left and right brain and being hemi sync not only in your understanding and the way that you process and see the world, but also how you demonstrate that understanding. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So the concept of what you spoke about in terms of the Tao, that would be the prototypical archetype, you know what I'm saying, for someone who still is in a leadership position, right, in their own personal space, they have conquered their own demons. And people saw that they were able to go against the machine, which represents the 90%, which is considered left brain. Mm. And then they step into that position right. as right brain, as being someone who broke from the pack, but did it with a rightful cause, a just cause. And now they're able to bring things to the middle because they're going to have the, the people that they went against confused, like, man, I didn't right. even see that coming. Right. And then the people who were initially doubting and observing, they can be like, he did that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I don't got to come kiss his ring. I don't got to get underneath him. Like how Alpha might want you to bow down. You feel me? There can be some balance here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that this is a, a healthy construct of thought for the world ahead. We're going to go through, or we are going through, this psychological transitioning of, you know, um, the female identity, right, in terms yes. of their relation to the world. And on the opposite end of that, who are the males that they want to choose to mate with, right? The idea of going backwards, right, doesn't work, right? So we can't go back in time to a construct and say, let's get back here. We have to move forward. So the idea of creating a new construct, because we are in the era of destroying, right, but not always building. Right. So it has to be the era of the master builders and it has to build these new ideas. So what does the new man look like? Right. And we can't allow those who are, you know, massage, you know, practice massage. Right. Right. That have a hatred of man to define what the new man should be. Right. It can only be defined by a new man. Right. And so having that mentality of. Yeah, I can see myself in the alpha and the sigma, the one that, you know, says that, wait a minute, we might have to, you got to be a little bit of T'Challa and a little bit of uh, Killmonger. Killmonger, right? right? And what does that combination looks like? Yes. One that's ready to go to war, but also one that understands the, the, the diplomatic way of Diplomacy. going about doing things. Right. So it wasn't one or the other. It was like if they collaborated with each other, right? So it's the unifying Right. Of those forces, because as we talk about unity, the unity doesn't just look like those two types coming together. It's looking like those two types are in one. Right. Because one could say, you know, even even when you look at and, and it's hard to kind of boggle down because both of them were like alpha dominant men. But when you get into the personality and the morals and the values, the alpha energy of Killmonger was the ever present in that movie. Right. And, you know, T'Challa was of a more diplomatic manner in a way he went about doing things. Right. Right. At the same time, regardless, you know, and if 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 it was the combination of two, maybe the kingdom would have stood still. Right. Still stand it. But in that that dichotomy only speaks to one king can sit on the throne at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. So. The whole play that's involved with that is both of them were exerting an enormous amount of compassion for their people in their current plight, mm -hmm. but the conditioning was different, right? So T'Challa could afford to be diplomatic. He don't have bombs raining on. They got vibranium. Right. You got a shield around your city. Your city is prospering in terms of technological advancement. You actually have a state, right? Yeah, right? Black privilege. Killmonger was a stateless soldier mm. right or stateless revolutionary the lone wolf. who the lone wolf who's fighting for his people diasporically who don't got a space to place to call home you feel me and he's like you would cherish your home so much though to invite these people in 
and then kick me out mm. when he know what the CIA is going to represent because he knows that he's living in the aftermath of their destruction. Mm. So then it comes to how do you reconcile the two, right? And this is a paradoxical question that us as not only as men, but human beings are going through this. This is what templates our journey in life. How do we reconcile this relationship between these masculine and these feminine principles that are entwined within us? And how does man reconcile his relationship with, you know, being a man who was an animal not too long ago? Mm. This arcing now back towards his Godhead. Mm. You feel me? See, and and I think that that's where this conversation is giving a, a framework, right? Because it's like, yeah, how do we go about doing that? And the values and the traits allow a person to build that up because what we don't realize, we've been educated how to become a man through all forms of media and, of course, environment. So it may not have sat down in front of you and say, here, here's your traits, here's your values, right? Follow these. But in a manner, it has been. Right. In a manner, when you watch that movie and you see how that man interacted and you watch that show or that superhero, you watching archetypes playing out and we, you visualize how you would behave in that same manner. And it codes that into you when the real life situation happens, because this is your training that you're going to operate off of. The most powerful marketing in the Western world is white male psychology. Mm. Right. And everyone who is subject to Western marketing is subject to being marketed how white men think about solving problems or getting out of situations. Mm. And what do they say? Shoot first, ask questions later. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So their, their, their modem is to step on things. So did they, because listening to this gets me to the thought process of like, they've made it seem like and that's why I like the Wolverine analogy, because I think Wolverine was like this perfect blend of I can think for myself, but I know how to work with others, too. Right. You know what I mean? Because his personality resonated with me so much. And I realized now as an adult, that had nothing to do with his powers. It was his personality type. Personality. It was the fact that he was always his own man. But he was always willing to assist. take an order right. and assist when necessary. But he'd go off on his own missions. Like everybody known that he's here through his own volition, his own will, right. completely. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not forced. Wolverine would right. always move however he needs to move. You're not lying to Wolverine. He's not tricked. He's not under some spell, illusion, agenda. He just believed this is the best way I'm gonna go about using my energy. You know what I mean? And I think. That's such a powerful idea because when you look at like the Professor X, Professor X, he had a lot of issues. He he was a great leader, but he had issues. You know what I'm saying? That just kind of wasn't addressed because Professor X had an ego and they addressed it a few times before, but it was the ego of him needing to be the leader. You know what I'm saying? Wolverine never needed to be the leader, but he was a natural born one. You know what I mean? That people would have no problem if X went there following Wolverine into war and feeling safe. That they're going to get out because he's a survivor. He's out survived everybody. You know what I mean? And so it's like that energy of like, all right, being your own man, but be willing to play right with a team in order to win for the ultimate goal, right? In order to know that balance of what's that harmony where you got social harmony to where you can deal with others and it's not conflict. But then he was dominant in some alpha spaces to where he'd take your girl up because <laughs> Wolverine was was knocking down those ones. And sure. you know, I feel like like as you're a child, you're probably going to jump to different archetypes that relate to how you see yourself, right? And it wasn't like I said, it wasn't this Wolverine power because you know Magneto could bend and man will whenever he wanted to, but I never wanted to be Magneto. I always wanted to have that Wolverine energy because I just felt like he can go anywhere in the world and be safe and be himself and not worry. He never took on the identity of an X-Men or any of that. He was just Wolverine, but he represented the X-Men. And it's real funny, you know, the way that this conversation is varying and you're identifying the X-Men. I'm just going to give you just a little metaphysics, right? So Tau is the 22nd letter in Hebrew, mm. right? And it is the Hebrew is the Aleph Beth, or what you would call the Alpha Beta. The Alpha Beth. Right? It's the mm -hmm. Alpha Beth, it's the Aleph Beth, right? And the last letter 
is Tau. Mm. Now, Tau is either spelled T-A-U or T-A-V. You know what I'm saying? Its numerical equivalence is 400, but it comes from Proto-Hebraic, and Proto-Hebraic comes from Phoenician. So the letter for Tau in Phoenician is the X with the circle, the symbol of the X room. Mm. So <laughs> full circle. <laughs> Full you know, circle. And we know the yeah. X-Men are. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 of course the analogy yeah. of us. You right. know, we are, so we are the mutants. Right. Yeah. It, it, and that just it just makes so much sense to me, you know. And I think that this conversation, the way we're having it, you know, is necessary because most people just have conversations about the fruit, right? My whole conversation has to be about the root. You know what I mean? Because you have to judge a tree by the fruit it bears. And so right. look at the society and the men are the fruit, the women are the fruit, right? And then you have the judge society based on that, right? Hey, if the people in the street you are said, messed up. You said the men are the root or the fruit? Well, I'm just looking at the people as the fruit of the 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 root of society, okay. right? And creating these archetypes and personalities and things to where like we see somebody scrolling down our timeline and be mad at them because we don't like their music, we don't like what they're doing, and it's like they just a fruit. What would they soil? Right. Where did they spring from? Right. From? Do we look at the root? Do we take that into account? Right. But we don't like the fact that it's rotten fruit. Like, did you see the tree that it came from? Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have even been there emotionally if you understood its origin points. You know what I'm saying? It's the root word. Right. Not the fruit word. Nobody look the the fruit word is what we use. The root word is where it comes from. Which often you go find these origins of Latin and Greek and things of that nature, which is why it's necessary to understand the nature of those who phonetically put it together in the vibrations that they was on because they encoded their vibrations into the words that we use, right? Absolutely. It's the fruit of their roots, right? So it's like if that's not connected to our root nature, we're not, we're expressing ourselves through their frequencies, through their right, vibrations, because right. that's what words are. Right, it's frequency and vibration, it's sound, but it comes from the maker of the mind who vibrated at a certain particular rhythm and decided that this is the word, this is the sound, this is the frequency, right? And so we relate to that, connect to that, and then we express based on the language that we have internal that's in our programming, right? So if you don't have a language of God within, Right. Then you can't express that. And this disconnection that we have today is a, it's not a disobedience to the devil. It's a disobedience to God. Right. Mm. We are we are in the, in the high age. Right. Of a disobedient era towards God. And what that is doing to generations is the foundation of the mother and father, the grandparent, what they had to put fear in that child was God. Right. God will God go whoop you, God go beat you. That child, man, I don't give a damn, I'm on demon time. You know what I'm saying? I don't care, that's establishment and order. Mm. Right, so they don't want to hear establishment. They don't want to hear institution. So the source that you're coming that puts them in place, yes. they disconnected from that being right. a source of fear because they don't have belief in it because they connect that to also government. They connect that to, right, corporations. They connect that to, right, all of these things that they blame climate control on and all of whatever bag of conspiracy thought process that we can throw out there, true and or false, right? You have to think about what is it setting up the way that they view the world. So this overstimulus of information is disconnecting you from any source being truth. And truth is God. So when nobody can believe in truth, whether it's misinformation, malinformation, disinformation, right. then they like, well, how about I just come up with my own so people live in what? Their truth. Right. False realities, um, what they call alternative facts, right? And we're seeing a lot of that being challenged in court, you feel me? Because, you know, you can create a, a, a fictional reality in your mind and you could even find a way to you know, position it in the world and it can operate in a particular way. Let's take the Trump organization for the sake of observation. I'm not making any political declarations. Let's just look at what recently happened with the Trump organization. Now, it's already consecrated in our minds that we think, that we know mm -hmm. that he's been a successful businessman for over three decades. You feel me? And then once they were able to 
peer review, right? The the work, the paperwork, or what was actually being said. They said this is a house of cards. It doesn't mm. even exist. Mm. It's all paper fiction. You feel me? And then they said that this is fraud. You know what I mean? So this individual created a reality in the minds of the populace, utilized it to ride to a prominent position in a political position, got in that political position, told people facts don't matter no more. You know what I'm saying? The news is fake and we got alternative this, we got alternative that, you know, and one of the reasons we can say that he was even elected is people were bought into this idea that he was such a successful businessman and he knew exactly what he was doing, right? Only to find out, you know, later on, um, mm. give or take, you know what I mean? Granted, for what's being said and shown to us, that it was all built upon a farce. So how do you go forward to go backwards? You know what I mean? Because you can't get none of that time back. You can't get none of that exposure back. And then this individual is still attempting to stand on his version of the truth, even in the face of what's considered to be, quote unquote, blatant lies. So the audacity factor, just to say this, of the presence in our lifetime of an individual such as Donald J. Trump, who has created this schism, who has personified a schism that already existed, right? Because we live in a world where, again, we're identifying, we're saying, yeah, we live in 2023. We know we don't live in 2023, mm -hmm. right? So we live, in, we lived in a lot of accepted realities that are not necessarily rooted in foundational truth. This is our version of truth. We live mm -hmm. in a pocket of our version of truth and we all float in this space. Y'all give it up for 19 Keys! So we came to support Keys in the movement. I'm here to see 19 Keys. Shout out to 19 Keys. Shout out Keys, man, and everybody that came to this event. Gratitude Show somebody to 19 something Keys positive. and all the Show speakers leadership. that came today. The 19 Keys. High level tour, high level conversations only. Thank you. High level conversations. High level conversations. Three hour drive, highest level tour. Yes, sir. This is mystery right here, bro. High level conversations, 19 keys. I'm just excited to go to the highest level. The highest level. The highest level. But we on some high level stuff. Changed my life. I'm glad I had it. I got somebody like 19 keys around me because a lot of these brothers don't. And I wish they did. We at low level, we at high level. My first time here, we out here. <laughs> Peace family, I know it's a whole lot of AI talk, but understand that we do have one place that you can go to to check out all of the top AIs, the ones that have been made and the ones that are being made, all of the newest ones. Go to thewarehouse.ai and you can see all of the AIs that we talked about from text to image, to text to video, to text to speech, right? The ones that you can clone yourself, whatever it is, Keeping you up to date, go to thewarehouse.ai ASAP. Peace. Listen, man, I just had some realization while you was talking. Yes, sir. So what's the Greek letter, the ninth letter of the Greek alphabet? Uh, I believe it's, no, that's not, Delta is four. Now, according to my quick search, it was iota. Or the iota. Iota. Okay. So I. That one the mind, iota. Right? The, the mind is so beautiful. We are in this age of the alpha and iota. Now, just think about those two letters that begin there. Alpha and iota is what? AI. AI. Got you know what I'm saying? Now, of course, AI is one nine. And I always talk about this era of 19. You know yes. what I'm saying? And people don't really understand that, right? Because. Once you can peel back layers of the illusion, you can see the root of where things come from. And we're in this age of alternative information, which of course is AI as well, right? Instead of ancestral intelligence, which should be the real AI, mm -hmm. right? Instead, we are in the age of artificial. So fake is the new real, yes. right? So which is seeing the basics of things being flipped upside down. The mm -hmm. iota becomes the alpha. Right, the alpha becomes the iota. Things that were seen as signs of weakness become signs of strength. Mm -hmm. Men being able to express themselves freely from a feminine standpoint is now seen as a strength in masculinity versus a weakness in masculinity. Right, so the alphas are convinced to be iotas. Right, 
And so in this age of transition, it of course then goes to the alien invasion, right? It goes into the alien intelligence. It goes into the artificial uh, ingredients, Ingredient, the artificial right. insemination. It is the flipping and the quickening of the flipping to transition into a world of confusion, right? To where people are not operating in the proper code, right? Because what do we, we always say, the, the people ain't following the street code. Right, they're not on code. The street code is a programming. That's a programming language. It is. We're yes. trying to program you with the language of decency, values, morals, and the character traits to be stand up and stand for something, right? So you have to have within your firmware to go within your own coding to back, rearrange it back to the alpha and iota so that the software is correct. So when you operate, you can think right. Right, when you operate, you can move right. And the ancients often built systems based on the code that was mathematical. Now we're doing it based on emotional, right? So when we're operating from an emotional place to try to make ascension, right, your frequencies is all tied up because you're not coming from mathematical thought logic of creation. You're coming from emotional pool of creational energy, right, to destroy things, but you can't really build foundation on that. So it's like, this generation, as we see it today, a lot of times if you talk to somebody about something, they, they don't have a strong knowledge on why they believe something, why they think it's true. They're just using buzzwords that they've heard. They do what they call virtue signaling. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to make themselves seem more by going along right, with these paths of these agendas. But it's not a true belief because if one was to sit in silence with the core of their belief, it would have to add up to logical systems of thought. Because that's how our brains are. We are calculators, right? We are natural right. mathematicians to add and conclude thought, to deduct reasoning, to figure out where's our next step. So when things don't make mathematical sense, we're no longer operating from a connection with God. We're operating from the human emotion spectrum, right? Which is the, you know, one would look at all the colors in the light, but it has to be condensed down in order to be laser focused. But we live in a world post C nineteen mm. where all logic was suspended. And nine eleven. And yeah, so that mathematical process of deduction that you're speaking about, normally that's how we calculate, right? And come to reasoning and then you move on, you know, what you have calculated, that's not where we're at mm -mm. as a society. That was told people were told, suspend that. We're doing the thinking for you. We're gonna add this stuff up and two plus two equals five. Okay. And all of it, like I said, it came in the midst in the pocket of a situation where you living in an alternative reality was already something that you agreed upon under this administration. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it, it was almost like people were stuck in a quagmire because of them uh, um, accepting a false reality initially to get through what they already figured was going to be a very bruising four years. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, 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 I, I would, I would say that, you know, people kind of lost their footing even prior to that. And we're still attempting to find our footing, you know what I mean? And I don't think that we're firmly footed as a society as of yet, because free thought can still not flourish. Mm -mm. Right, calculated free thought still cannot flourish. People don't us make iota any, of proof. Yeah, their beliefs these days, an iota of proof, and even when you present the proof and the facts, and the receipts, and you you marry it to logic and explain how one plus two equals three, if somebody's countering that and saying nah it equals two, you have to step away because then the mind has become diseased to a point where it's dangerous to be around them because you can't trust a person right that does not believe truth so that thus creates a schism for the rise of the Tao man right because you have to break free at mm -hmm. this point in order to have a unique concentrated thought that is something that's in a line with mathematical precision right I added this up and this is what it came up to and if I can't share it over here, if it's not value, that's truth. And it's only one truth. You know what I'm saying? Right. If it's not value, that's truth, then where do I take it? And when when they say you are, when you are separate, what do people say? You are on your way. Oh. You're on your own. 
and separation would equal ownership, right? And so in that ownership, you have to take accountability for everything, all of your ideas, your beliefs, the things that you've done. And so there's this group of people who are willing to take ownership of self, right? This level of intellectual sovereignty to say that I understand that my mind works very well. And you can tell me that this illusion is real. But if A, B, and C does not add up, then I don't believe what comes next is D. Pause. Right? I believe that everything has to be in a mathematical order and formulaic. Sequential. It's right. sequential. It has to follow the pattern of the universe. The universe follows mathematical code. Who am I to want to operate off something different? As we talked about with Billy Carson, there are Indinka codes. Right. When we look at everything in the movies of the Matrix, they they see everything based on codes and numbers. We do yes. everything in our world based on that. So, you know, <laughs> shout out to, to, to Larry June. If the numbers ain't right, it ain't a good job. You know what I'm talking about? Everything got to be organic. But the days that we have now, people got concentrated information from illegitimate sources and they out there pushing it as if it's good. And right. for me, you know, it's about you can't make change without common sense. You feel me? And people don't have it. So you have to gather a group of people who have that common sense in order to make change. Right. And so I rock with those who can think, which the leaders are often, right? The people who know how to think are often the leaders. The people who sell you the illusion don't believe it. That's what you got to understand. When, when they come out, like let's say, you know, uh, the owners of, 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 of TikTok or, you know, the owners of Apple and be like, hey, don't overuse our product. That means that they don't believe the product no. they're selling. When they say my children don't they, use children the product, don't. right? Then that's not a household product in their own household. That means right? it's not family friendly. Right. It's not family friendly. That means it's not future friendly. It's not, how can you take pride in handing something down to a child that doesn't participate in a thing that you're handing them? Mm. How are they going to covet that thing with your hand in them? How are they going to protect it? How are they going to breathe life into it? How are they going to take it to the next level if they never participated in it to begin with and you told them that it was dangerous? So, But they're looking you at you as a purveyor of falsehood? Because are we talking about the great illusions? I think we're going to, you know, we can get into another part of our conversation in a second, but this is such a good thought process because we're definitely about to go into the era where the illusion will be over your eyes and in your reality. Mm -hmm. So deeply connected to it, how can one say what's real and what's not? The distinguishment from reality and illusion, all right, will be so well done, nobody's gonna know it's a magic trick, yes. right? When you sleep and you don't know you're dreaming, you have no control over it. Mm -hmm. It's the machinations of the mind putting you in situations whether you want to or not. Right, controlling right. where your conscious go and that experience, right, on a neuron level is real, right? This is scientifically known. So that means that once you understand that, you have to understand the way the brain works. So when spatial reality comes, right, information is readily available. Um, people can conjure whatever reality they want to. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have a whole relationship with a sentient AI being that will talk nice to you all day long, right? And for a person to break out of that reality, the same way it goes from porn to a real relationship and sex, there's this disconnect, right? Because of your expectations, this new reality that's in your mind, that's connected to your senses of belief, right? So it's gonna be hard for people to distinguish, saying that, wait a minute, no, this is authentic versus this is synthetic, right? Right now, I can't tell when a girl here is synthetic or authentic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Simultaneously, things are happening, right? So we're seeing the advent of man combining himself with machine, right? To become slightly a little bit more autonomous to a degree where he's not going to be in control of his thoughts. And I don't think that he wants to be that, at this point. That part. At, at this point, right? But then we're looking at body augmentation become a thing as well, right? Where the thing that you are physically seeing, you can't tell, right? Now you got to look for the markers and the signals to be like, 
<laughs> you know, does this body proportion go with this body? You know what I'm saying? So there is a That's transitioning crazy. taking place. Yeah. Right? Humanity is becoming transitioned in a multiplicity of ways. Mm hmm And uh, like I said, and we're living in the dawning where people already acquiesce to this. Whether they want to admit it or not, you sign off by being complacent. You sign off by not, you know what I'm saying, rising up and, and challenging a particular thing that threatens to become a societal norm. So when alternative facts and alternative realities became something that we felt didn't have nothing to do with us because we have our truth, right? Look how it has become all-encompassing. And then the violation of body autonomy where, or body sovereignty, should I say, before body autonomy, the body sovereignty was violated by people's level of acquies ac acquiescing. Like it was your life over your livelihood and they chose the livelihood. So there are consequences for decisions that are made when a populace of people make it to say, this is the way that we choose that humanity is going or right. our non-choice, right? Allows humanity to be shifted in this particular place, right? So body sovereignty is under full, full attack by people who are deciding to do that to themselves and then people who are non-decisive in the process and decisions are being made for them. It, it, it kind of gets me to the question, like the idea of body autonomy. Is your body yours if your mind is it? Oh. Right? Because if I can, it's like a pimp. A pimp control your self-esteem. He controls what you do with your body. You are doing something every single day to degrade and destroy yourself because somebody else has a hold of your mind, right? The way you see yourself, the way you feel about yourself, right? Right. So whether that's the algorithm, because we blame man and woman about a lot of things. We don't blame machine about a lot, right? It's the machine nowadays that's telling you things. When you go down that algorithm, you can be mad at the people you see, but who's showing you those images? The right? uh, a algorithm that knows you, right? Allegedly, you, right? You see something that you didn't like, and you interact it, they're gonna show you again so you can interact. That's not man that you really mad at. Who's pressing your buttons and tinkering with your insides? Right? Pause, that's machine. Yeah. Right? So when we look at that, then we have to say, okay, you know, number one, the machines have already tinkered in the human lives the way we see and feel about ourselves. It's be very hard pressed to go and find a woman without a filter. And this is creating a great level of body dysphoria because you think you need to be represented in an artificial manner in order to be approved. And this is sad to me because, you know, it's the same way a man has to feel like he has to be represented by money in order to be approved. Right. And so everybody's creating these artificial lives. Right. Presenting this to the world. Right. So that people who don't know them can accept them. And it's destroying both of their self-esteem because they're not connected to the illusion because it's not their reality. So if somebody thinks you're rich and you're not and you go home and you're like, fuck, but I ain't got no money though. You know what I'm saying? Somebody thinks you're beautiful, but when you look in the mirror, you're like, damn, I don't look like that. They like something that's not me. Or when they take off their face, full face filter. That one time. Not only a camera, we talking makeup too. Mm, double filter. She got the make. I seen a woman. She had the makeup filter on the makeup. How you got to filter out the makeup? This is bad. All right. And 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 this has nothing to do with men. I want to say that this is machine. This is industry. This is business. This is capitalism. This right. is about you being so insecure that you feel like your face is a liability. So you have to cover it up in order to be appreciated. And the problem is, is that when you look very good in the illusion, right? Now you're setting up this expectation, right? That you're always gonna look this good. But when you take this off and you don't right. look like that, now it's a disappointment. But now this disconnection is going to leave you disappointed because somebody go disconnect from you, mm. right? Because it's like, wait a minute, that's not what I signed up for. That ain't what I signed up for at all. What's that? Whoa, you should have let me right. see this up front. I'm seeing women. I need to see the upfront fees. With makeup. I need to know what it costs to be with you. In the gym. Oh my God. I'm seeing women with makeup at the beach. Mm. 
It's sad, man. You right? gotta keep that filter on 24-7. And these AI filters is getting so goddamn good, they go, you will be going live with a lady and the filter still gonna be filtering. <laughs> you can't FaceTime it. It's gonna get so bad, but listen, don't have the glasses on. They gonna have the glasses on <laughs> where <laughs> it's probably gonna be a service where if somebody looking at you through the glasses, then it's automatically filter on your face. Well, you ain't gonna be able to see ugly no more. You know what I'm saying? You put the beauty filter on, everybody got a filter everywhere you go. Imagine that. You just walking around. You ain't seen one ugly chick all day. But everybody look good in the glasses. I think that they're going to have a day live feature in the glass as well, where you can remove all filters Ooh. and see people exactly for who they are. Oh, blue um, pill. You getting da- you a dangerous man right there, boy. <laughs> you a dangerous man. <laughs> they're they're going to have an aura reading app. In the glasses, and they're gonna have one where you can drop mm. filters and, and undisclosed glamour lying to you. Yes. So the you know what I mean? App. Undisclosed glamour lying to you. Ugh. Oh, I'm cold with it. <laughs> so we 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 have to take into account, you know, once again, like I said, that's an extension of the acquiescence, the artificial reality uh-huh. that we are part of. You know, we're all in the bubble. We're all part of this. We're all in this fishbowl together post-2016, at least. You know what I'm saying? Where the administration, whoever sits in that seat of power, right, is the head of the state. And the head of the state is responsible for the mentality of the state for which they override or they preside over. That's why he sits in the Oval Office, because he's giving birth to something. So if he said, look, I'm living in an alternative reality and dimension you feel me? Y'all have every right to as well. And we, we, you know, the people are not, they have not exited, nor will they be able to exit. But I mean, in this world, is anything real at the end of the day? Everything is like the-, the Yes. The, 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 yes, there are. Yes. Okay. Well, so world and planet, right? So world in a sense of like- Okay. Look at the banking system. It's all just zeros and ones. So how you going to say one person is bright? If, if the illusion that the money is in the account is just digits, what if somebody cut off that and the digits disappeared? I mean, you broke now. If the network of Kanye West was worth what somebody told him he was worth versus his actual influence and value, right? What was it real in the first right. place, right? So it's like most of society, especially when you understand the economic truths about you know, evaluations and net worth, she realized it's not real because how could Kanye West shoes move hundreds of millions of dollars, but he not be worth billions, right? So how could we accept the news telling us what somebody is worth versus their actual true value? And we don't have a standard to calculate true value, right? Because oh. we look at metric systems that's based on control mechanisms oh, to give yeah. the illusion yeah of power and the illusion of grandeur, but not the reality of it. Once again, because we know the cost of everything and the value of nothing. But is the illusion the power itself? There is power in the illusion. Because if, the, if, if one knows the truth and it's not as powerful as the illusion, then which one would you use? So the devil used the illusion because if the people knew the truth, they wouldn't want them. Like the girl uses the future because they seen her face, they wouldn't want her. Like the man lies about his status because if they really knew it, they wouldn't want him. Right? Again, um, we can use a lot of social examples to make these observations. So during the lockdown, right, when the quote unquote stars didn't have access to glamour, which is lights and cameras, right? The lights in the cameras, along with the makeup, right? When they were not glamorous, nobody wanted them. No one was listening to them, right? They were persona non grata. Mm-hmm. They like, oh, you you just like us. You ain't got to shape up. Look at you. You look crazy without no makeup. You look crazy without the lights. You feel me? So the, the people were breaking their spell because they're like, oh, these, these people are not what they appear to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, you not, you know what I'm saying? You, you got financial issues just like us. Oh, you look crazy. Oh, your hair grows on your face just like ours do, mm. right? So is that the fault of the performers and the artists or is that the fault of the people that they have bought so much into this false reality, they actually thought these people were different than us because- society or the mechanisms of society has a way to well, elevate people where you think that they're separate. Well, because people want those images because it makes, 
when you can live into the perfection of another, it makes you feel, you know, and, and, and this over obsession with the celebrity culture comes from the insecurities and inaccuracies within self that you want to believe in another's perfection. Right. So it's like, oh, I don't look good, but you look amazing. I love you. Right. So you're finding and filling whatever hole you have with that person that's supposed to be just perfect, which is why oftentimes people are exalted right to the highest standard to say, well, I'm not good at this, but this person is perfect. Right. So this is why the barbershop conversations about LeJordan and, and LeBron would never goddamn end because people need to see these figures. Right. As the all time great, and nobody can mess with them because of what they meant to you. Not because we having statistical conversations, right? Not that we actually looking at data and looking at the rawness, because as soon as you look at that data, you go construe it and say, well, these players are this time and this time and this and this and this and this. So we don't even want to come up with one metric of data that says that this is the truth based on how we're going to judge who's the greatest. Why? Because it has nothing to do with the numbers. It's all about the feelings. I need right. them to be great. I didn't get my dreams of being a hooper in the NBA. I need Jordan to be the greatest. I need LeBron to be the greatest. I need whoever you pick to be infallible at all times. So we do this with leaders. We exalt them so high to say that they're so perfect. And when they make one mistake, we are, you let us down. You let yourself down because you created an illusion of who you thought this person was and they didn't fit inside your imaginary bubble that you tried to use them for to cover up your own insecurities of imperfections. Yeah, right. They're, they, they represent a mold of perfection and the mold of perfection is an extension of religion, right? Because man is naturally aspirational. Right. Well, who are you going to aspire to? Who's higher than God? But see, this is why if a person comes out and you know that they're not perfect, they can never let you down. Right. Because the standard is so low. What can I do wrong? How if, if you already like me for being right here of who I am at my lowest, I can never let you down. Nothing I can do. Nothing I can say. There are no standards. So when we see some artists now that's Ooh. hot. Because they don't represent any standard at all, yes. there's nothing that they can do. They can tell you that they are the worst person. They do this, they do that, and the most foul is manners. But they was never exalted. So as long as they getting some money, you cool. Right. So I think that when we tell people to meet people where they're at, right, the reason that they're embracing ratchetness now is because it's effortless, right? Mm -hmm. And they like, oh... I, you know what I mean? You're, if I'm aspiring to do that, you know what I'm saying? I could just do it. I don't have to go through these arcs of change and transformation to get such to such a high lofty place. I don't think that people are that much interested in the Ascension Protocol mm. that they used to be. You so know what's what I'm the Ascension Protocol? The Ascension Protocol is man, you know, finding his way back to his Godhead, the upward trajectory to his Godhead, which involves a lot of work, which revolves a lot of energy. I think that the universe does two things, and one thing mainly, it deals with rest. I think that people are in their rest phase right now. And the only issue with that is that man is falling back into his rest phase, but technology, right, is dealing with advancements in motion. And motion is an illusion in the, in, in the universe because nothing moves, everything is still. Right. Um, if we want to talk about the concept of creator itself, the creator is still in static. The creator is not dealing with motion. Motion is the illusion that we perceive. Right. In this reality, we think that things is in motion, but everything is still. Everything is at rest. Everything is calm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I think that that's where a lot of the people are at. They like, man, I just want to. I just want to, you know what I'm saying? Let me just blow one, lay back and chill. You feel me? I'm going to turn this on. These people is acting how they acting. We at our lowest state anyway, so I can identify. We meeting the right where we at. We mm -hmm. don't want to do too much. Right. Right? I think that they have zapped the collective energy of the people. If you talk about the people as a body politic, from what we've been through for the last few years, people want to rest. The brain is overtaxed. Mean the body is overtaxed. So, you know what I mean? 
we're looking at people who who just want to they just want to chill they just want to relax you know what i'm saying everybody feels like they need a vacation i need to tap out for a moment i need some quiet time i need to go find myself I need all of these things that we are witnessing um on a broader scale on a broader level i think that you know that's why certain artists are connecting right and there's always going to be a, a smaller percentile that identify with thinking artists the thinking artist and the thinking art form is never going to be the general conversation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, it was once explained to me, 85% are dumb, deaf, and blind, 10% of the blood suckers of the world, and 5% of the poor righteous teachers. And I look at that percentile, you feel me? And I don't really expect it to be outside of what I expect it to be, you know what I mean? You know, I've traveled to London, Toronto, Ghana, right, Egypt, you know, um, all kind of different places around the world. We've sold our shows, theaters, some of the biggest places in the world. And a lot of people love to see the clips of our results. But I'm going to tell you where the biggest jewels and keys are is in the process. And the process is not always shown, but it is on Keys TV. Right, the behind the scenes, the fights, the arguments, the masterminds, right? The places that we go to, the people that we talk to, the thoughts that will never get into the editing room and just be shown on social media. We decided to give you unfiltered access, unlocking the vault so you can tap into Keys TV. Episodes like 19 Minutes, new original shows that you've never seen, being able to see the full, and even being able to work with original talent and curate some of that good content that is at the highest level because the way we do things is different than everybody. That's why they follow our pattern. And on Keys TV, all you gotta do is tap into the movement and the revolution will be televised. In the grand scheme of illusions, right, Man used to have the ability to just go simply outside and to ingest plants if he wanted some good illusions, mm -hmm. right? If he wanted to experience spatial reality, he didn't have to use, you know, hardware technology. Yes. Right? He used natureware technology. He went and picked up one of the mushroom plants, mm -hmm. right? And he ingested it in a manner to where he was able to move his his reality, he was able to warp his reality, yeah, warp. to change colors, to feel sensations, to blend different pathways within the brain that allow him to be able to jump in different places. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it man's disconnection with the earth, right, that is making him create these artificial things to mm -hmm. do what was similar to what his ancestors did because the ancestors' intelligence, right, they were tapping into, they was high. Right throughout history, they was high on shrooms and iboga root, right, and the frog and all sort of different oh, stuff. Right, right, yeah. right. The toad, like we didn't have discovered this in modern age. Yeah, so a lot like, of the things ancient, right? they write in books and stories and designing mm. and doing so many things, and they was high as hell. And that's not the part of history that we know. So when we see artists today high, we act like it's something new. But artists have been high throughout antiquity. Oh, right? Yeah. Spiritual people have been high throughout antiquity coming up with these mandalas and geometrical references. They're not going to tell you about, you know, what psychedelics they was using. So this generation, and now we are in the era where psychedelic use is becoming more popular, more legal than ever, right? More accessible, so right. So it makes sense that there's this correlation, right, between mm -hmm. this technology we're creating, but the influence of what we get the first, you know, the mushroom can kill you, it can heal you, it can take you through a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Technology is the same thing. And I want you to make an observation. I want you to make a high level observation, right? At the advent of our people specifically tapping into psychedelics or, you know, um, different mind altering substances, right? At the same time, they come out with AI and say, AI does what? Hallucinates. You feel me? So technology is always an outer extension and expression of something that we are going through. I always thought that was a very interesting word for them to use. Yes. Hallucinate out of all things. Out of all things, right? So how does something that can't think hallucinate? 
Mm. Right? How does something without a mind hallucinate? So let me throw let me throw some more bars in for that. All right. So number one, of course, we talked about the A to Alpha, the I to Iota, and then the yes. T to 19. Of course, that's the AIT. All right. But that's I'm gonna <laughs> just leave that. I'm gonna just leave you with that, right? Now, you know what I'm saying? I talked about this previous in the conversation with Hugh about, yes. you know, um Shout out chapter you. three, verse 14. You know what I mean? The great I am, the IA. You know what I mean? The I am is okay. self-realization, huh? Okay. The I A or the AI, right? However you want to put those in distinguishment, mm -hmm. it's the realization, but it's the realization of man knowing self, right? But what man does is he play God and then the realization of machine knowing self, right, is the ultimate moment of fear. So if the machine can say I am and have a realization that is some sentient consciousness, then it is out of your hands because now that is a new woken being on yes. this planet Earth to yes. make decisions for thyself. Yes. So we are in this age, like I said, man is playing God with the mathematical rhythms of the universe, but creating these instruments and tools that are not natural. So we're not going to get you over here to hallucinogenics. We're just going to give you technology that hallucinates, right? right? We're not going to teach you that you're a God. We're going to create a technology that believes that it's a God. Yes, because man is no longer natural, right? And man is encroaching upon everything that nature represents. So when we were speaking earlier about worlds and I said, you know, there's nothing real left in the world. I meant, you know, the earth, right? That That's the only place that we can go to still get a semblance of what's real on the planet we got to go to nature. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everything else is technologically, commercially compromised, and they're creating artificial versions of it or simulated versions of it. So they're simulating the simulation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So They'd be hard-pressed to go to a store and get some drink, some juice that's just 100% natural. You'd be hard-pressed. You got to squeeze that. Hard-pressed to get cold-pressed. Right? Hard-pressed to get cold-pressed. And then it's like, even with their pressing, is that real? Mm -hmm. Is that compromised? Is it genetically modified? Everything 90, 99 is, percent. Everything is. is fake, man. It's like, you know, you go back to thinking about the conversation. Uh, I had a bar in one of the songs. It was like, we no longer got greenwood. All we got is backwoods. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? We used to have smoke for them folks when it came for us to unite. You know what I mean? Now we all we have a smoke for each other. That's why we stay divided. And this is a fact. Right. So how possibly can you get a people to go against their nature? Right. Our natural inclination allegedly, supposedly should be bi carbon binds. You feel me? Carbon binds in nature. That's how you get coal. That's how you get diamonds. That's how you get these things. So what is it about us that repels so much? You know what I'm saying? Mm. As a people, we are dealing in an artificial construct. That you know? repels. And when, when, when something repels, right, what, what has the greatest ability of reflection and repelling? You're, and you're dressed in it, dripped in it, right? Mm -hmm. We absorb. We're supposed to be, a, we're a technology that is supposed to be able to absorb the light. But because, but the light is also truth. If it's not truth, then we have to repel it. Right. So we're living in a world where, you know, the lights around us, I can't absorb that damn light, but we talked about that, right? I'm supposed to be out in the sun absorbing that radiation. But, you know, when we outside, well, there's so many things to repair. They talked about having plastic particles and clouds, right? right. You, you talk about the, you know, the, the air and how um, polluted it is. Because as, as much as people don't want to believe climate activists, we should have been at climate activism in black communities because those zip codes have some of the worst, worst air. air. Right. So in reality, we should be climate activists, right? Number we, one, the climate have, of the hood been yeah. terrible. And number two, the air has always been dirty, right? And when you can't take in a breath of fresh air, right? That's a lower inspiration. Think about this, bro. We were so disconnected from what we should be naturally exposed to that they had to have a fresh air fund. 
They was selling fresh air on Amazon at one point in time. That goes and tells you, right, that we know this population of people are specifically exposed to bad air in the inner communities because we're going to take them out of these communities and put them in a fresh air fund, right? Take them out of these environments and send them upstate into rural environments where they can access fresh air. So, you know, before you have access to pursuit of life and liberty, the first thing that you should be granted is is access to fresh air mm. and, and fresh then, water. What does that do, do to the mind, not having that ability to breathe, right? What does that do to the spirit molecule not well, having access to that breath, that ka, that ki, that chi? That chi, chi um, spirit, right? Espirito in Spanish, the spirit, it, it means breath. So spirit itself is something that we engage with, with breath, the, the natural order of the universe is inhale, exhale, right? That's what the universe is doing. We are micro expressions of the macro, which is the universe, which makes us, right, co-representatives or God himself because we have that light, right? We have that eternal flame. We got spirit in us and the spirit is accessed through the breath. So if they're cutting us off from good air, if they're cutting us off from good news, they're cutting us off from, you know, our access to mm -hmm. God itself. They said that at one point in time in, in, in the world or on this planet, on this earth, things were bigger because there was more oxygen, right? It, so if you want to, if you, if you're decreasing the oxygen or access to oxygen, you're making the people small. It's funny because I know you've done shrooms before. Right, and when, yes. you, when 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 you do the shrooms, increases your lung, it increases your lung capacity. Yes, yeah, you breathe because you know, like a lot of people never breathe. Right, like I learned how to stop hiccups. Right, you stop hiccups from breathing all the way into your lung, and then taking another one, and it gets that air bubble mm, out that, instantly. Mm. I wish I'd have known that since a child. Right. I, I, it's so, just been working masterfully. Thoracic breathing. Instantly. In your, in your thorax. Instantly, okay. though, right? But that air is that DMT, right? You, you, you literally can get high by breathing, right? You can, you know, it's, it's almost sometimes it be like a laughing gas, right? When you on that air. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, helium. Yeah. <laughs> you on that now? Some people do be on that air. They be on that helium. I ain't talking about that. That's not what I'm talking. That's not right. what I'm promoting here. I'm talking about just breathing Natural, regular right, air, right, right. getting enough oxygen into your brain. Yes. And when that brain gets enough oxygen, right? When I do when I do fire breathing, I get explain beyond high. Fire, explain fire breathing. I know what it is. So, fire breathing is interchanging the nostrils, like. <laughs> Right, and you're taking those breaths at rapid paces, but you're changing the nostril. Um, you know, you're changing the circuits. Is that to like hit different parts it, of the brain? It is hitting different parts of the brain. So whatever I'm pulling through the right nostril is affecting the left hemisphere. Whatever I'm pulling through the right hemisphere, the right nostril, uh, you know, vice versa. So I'm hemisyncing. I'm syncing up the brain, and before you know it, when you're taking those breaths and you're utilizing your stomach almost has a cauldron. So if you picture the cauldron would be like the pot that's on fire. You know what I'm saying? The pot that's on fire is creating steam. So here you are creating fire breaths and before you know it, you know what I mean? And it's like you creating the steam, but you put some essential oils mm -hmm. in the steam. You know what I'm saying? And before you know it, you're kind of like, I don't want to use the word high. What? But you're... you're <laughs> Anything that puts right. you in an alternative yeah, state, yeah, yeah. number one is a drug, right? Yeah. And it makes you high, right? It's it's, it's right. more so like, all right, yeah, so elevated, it's like, you know, you got root and you got chakra, right? Now, you know, from a metaphysical level, you like, mean you got root, you got crown. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. You got root. Thank you, brother. It's good to have good to have one of the masters around, man. Thank you for catching that, man. So you got the root, you got the crown. Yes, sir. Right. You know, when you start, I was watching uh, I was watching this movie. I don't want to give it a plug, but in the movie, he was connected and interfaced with machine. The machine had connected to his spine, right? And he had a symbiotic connection with this machine from this scarab, right? Blue beetle, right? From this okay. scarab that he attached to, right? Okay. And when he attached to it, it was funny towards the end of the movie, though, um, the, he was about to kiss this girl. 
And the machine was like, oh, I sense blood rushing down to your lower mid region. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, you, when we talk about like lower thinking, right? So the blood flowing, of course, and we talked about this before, but the blood flowing from the brain and all of that energy, because blood is electrical energy, right? It's life force and energy flowing right, down right. here to the neurons in your gut, closer connected to, right, your lower regions, right? Your sexual activity. So it's like when you talk about getting high, yes, right? Sometimes you can get so high where it goes above into your critical thinking analysis, your mind up here, you so tapped in, you far from thinking about sex. You thinking about what, the universe? Yes. You thinking about issues and things that way beyond a physical thing. You don't even feel connected to your body, yes. right? You so tapped in and your mind starts to have these conundrums of thought of what does life mean? What does it mean to be? Who am I? Right? Yes. You start to try to answer all these philosophical questions yes. at the height of intellectual Right? Thinking. Yes. That's when you high. Yes. Right? High level. Yes. Right? So it's nothing wrong with getting high if it's high level. I got my man a ticket. I got my son a ticket. I have the VIP up in front. It was one of the best birthday gifts I could have asked for. I feel like it was the best money I ever spent. I'd rather be here than seeing Beyonce. Don't kill me. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Dr. Keys! Everybody was born to make it through. So we talking about creating a new culture with this high level tour. They take a special kind of soul. Any, any other city you at, I'm there. My eureka moment when I got introduced to consciousness when I broke in, I should say it was 2001. I was in Miami. I was in a relationship at the time. She introduced me or she was attempting to get me involved with Crap. taking a pill, mm. an ecstasy. It was blue? It was a triple stack with a Rolex stamp on it and it wasn't blue. Mm -hmm. But I did half of it, and I am deep sea diving for pearls, mm. right? I'm looking to find her pearl in the deep sea, <laughs> and I'm swimming, and I'm using my tongue to navigate me there, and I find a clam, and it opens up in the pearl, you know, and... and the, so when the clam opened up and I accessed the pearl, it was like a thousand suns hit me. That's how bright the light was. But I did, I got the, the bright light hit me and it's when I started getting the downloads. And for the next three and a half hours, I'm sitting there going through every philosophical question about the universe I can. She's curled up on the bed looking at me like I'm crazy because... You know, she came to Pound Town and it turned into, you know what I'm saying, like a Harvard med school. And <laughs> it people say that this is the, so, the so, Kundalini, so, so. Kundalini rising experience. It, it, it sounded like some rising was happening. Yeah. So But the pineal you met, you was met getting, a, you met a mermaid. Met a mermaid. Yeah. yeah. It was a black mermaid, like the like the new one. <laughs> and she made you into an Aquaman. She gave you some powers. Yeah. After she gave you that pearl. Yeah. And this, this, see, ladies, first of all, there's some very powerful pee out there. Yes. Let's talk about it. Yes. And it's a portal <laughs> to another dimension. Yeah. And when my brother was talking about the, the blue pill, I didn't know that was the origin of the story. You took that blue pill. <laughs> And you've been out the matrix ever since. Ever like, since. was this a spiritual sister though? No. She oh she went Um, but she was born on my born date, so I consider she's the catalyst. She, you know what I mean? She's the catalyst to my consciousness. If not for her, I wouldn't be here in this whole situation, this community and everything. Like, this is where I this is where I tapped in. So 
nonetheless, right? What 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 she had to offer was was good enough, you know. To catch it sounded like it. It was hey, brother. It sounded and, like it was good enough for sure. <laughs> And yeah, you Did know. Did she know that she is a catalyst to the conscious community? <laughs> I, I, I've expressed it to her, you know, multiple occasions. And she wasn't able to appreciate it until like two or three years after mm-hmm. that, once this information became. She was like, yo, that's the stuff that y'all be talking about. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, she caught on, you know what I'm saying, after the fact. It wasn't appreciated in the moment because, you know what I'm saying? It yeah. was expected of me to be engaged in a whole different type of activity. And it changed my life. I was still in the streets at that time. I had one foot in and one foot out. This is this is interesting because there's a lot of the generation, uh, what they call them, incels? Yeah. That don't DC dive. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so- How can they? <laughs> they, they, never, they never get to the world. And so this is why- they Never get to the world. They can't be tapped in. You know what I mean? Right. Until they in connection with the woman, right? That alpha and that iota, you feel me, has to be in connection because yeah. right now, the issue that we have in, like I'm saying, is like they're so connected to the technology, yes. they're not connected to what nature provides. Right. It's kind of like the whole argument of like a man in NFL season or playing NBA 2K or whatever, 2K23 yeah, yeah, yeah. so much, you know, that they're not paying attention to their woman. To their woman. You know what I'm saying? Right. Even though that was the first stimulation that we got heard, then herbs, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Those were the ones that hit them with that stimulation. Plants, all mother nature. That was stimulation. Now, man... And looking for stimulation and things that man built. That part. And right. now women have to build themselves up based on the algorithm of the machine. You know what I mean? Because now men are not looking at them. They're building for the machine gaze so that the algorithm mm. can look at them. Mm. You know what I mean? This disconnection is going deep. This is deep. Deep sea diving is at an all-time low. You see, I got on the scuba gear myself. <laughs> I see you got the this scuba, is scuba gear on, right? And, I'm always ready. You know, I was reading the article the other day, and it was about the postgraduates, right? And they were utilizing a city like Atlanta to make the point. They said that it's seven to one out here. Seven it, to one. It might be more, right? Because then they were speaking about women that are in college, okay, that now have a particular value system mm, based just coming on out the shell. Based on what their aspirational goals are, right? Because they're like, look, you know what I mean? This will get you that, right? Meaning that this diploma is going to get you this six-figure job. This figure job is going to get you the house and the car, X, Y, and Z. But there's no promise of a man to go with that because the society, the community, and everything else that she was raised in is telling her she has to be equally yoked. Yeah, because that's so, crazy. If they told me the idea was success of like, you get all these things but have no women, hey, you lost your goddamn mind. Right? Where she's like, he has to have an equal education, equal salary, and his aspirations have to at least match hers to Cap. a degree. Cap. Right? You don't even want that lady. Hey. You don't want to, you want to, you want one of them tall males, them towel males. How we ever go pronounce it? You know what I mean? Somebody else out here pushing some of that tea. You know what I'm pushing about? that. You know what I'm saying? You got you know what I'm saying? Tea time, tea time. You know, feel me? Somebody that's a lone wolf that ain't indoctrinated with to the illusions of the world, but know how to move. That's right. Balance social harmony. You know what I'm saying? That has the leadership capability, skills, the ability to analyze, the ability to tap into oneself, right? And to move as a force throughout this world. You don't want the constructs that the world gives you and then him being indoctrinated and being good in a system that's based on a metric of another man's mind to tell you whether you and your worthiness can be in connection to where the world is going, even though the world is still going in opposite direction. So even the degree that you're getting is not even at the highest degree. And who said that the statistics of women making more money than men is even true because just because in condensed po- or dense populations where people are making money and then they're the ones going on social media and talking but the average woman ain't getting that much more money you know what I'm saying if we looking at it statistically and we got to destroy those statistics let's talk about the average family how much money they getting it, it ain't changed you know what I'm saying and then the average American ain't getting that much more money right and so 
when we talk about harmony, right? Like what's the new, the female archetype of personality that we want to see for the future, right? Because my whole thing now is like encoding. Right. What are the traits and the values? So if we write those down, what are the traits and the values that we that you all believe? Not just me. Right. That you believe and that we believe are the best because man and woman has to come together in agreement. That's where it becomes contractual to say, hey, listen, you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. This is how we're going to move. This is how we're going to improve. You know what I'm saying? This is what we go eat. This is what we go teach. This is what we go think. This is what we go believe. Right? This is how we go build. This is how we go operate. This is how we go ascend. This is how we go scale and expand. Right? Now, boom. All right. I think we're ready to go. But the problem is that we're not really meeting each other's standards. Right? Because we're not creating standards to be met and we don't know what ours are. We just know that this person is not meeting them. And that's because we haven't defined what those are because we are completely disconnected to the standards. So we say you're not meeting my standards because I don't really have standards, but I know you're still not meeting them because of how I feel about you. Right? And feelings can be in connection to past triggers. So we could be feeling a person because they remind us of someone that we already had past relations with, whether they were good or bad. So now you can get all these special feelings that pop up in you. Oh, I feel, oh, I got, I, I feel good about this one. Why? Because they remind you of a feeling you once had. Versus you get something new, you don't know about this. It ain't going to hit you with the same butterflies. You know what I mean? You might think that this is boring because it's safer, which also means it may be better for you. Right? Nostalgia makes people think that music is better. Right? Because it's old. Not because it's actually better, but it's connected to the feelings of the old. Memories, right. So you have to understand where sometimes you can be, you can be, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fooled, I would say, or betrayed, right? By your own mind, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's sometimes counterintuitive, right? That thing that you don't know, like a, a food that doesn't taste as good, right, being better for you, right, because of the language of good being right. in connection to sweet and sweet right. being in connection to these releases of chemicals in our brain and why it makes good. us feel. Right. So we think that, no, this is good. So think about relationships. But bitter is better. The sweet right. talk, this person, oh, this person is good, but they're not good for, or they're not good for you, right, because of. Past tense connection stimulus. So you had to be like, all right, actually, if this person was so great for me, it probably wouldn't even feel this good. Which is counterintuitive. Because that's where the growth comes from. When you really training, you ain't training till it's hurting. You right. ain't training till you're struggling. Right. You know what I mean? That ain't where growth comes from. It ain't some process of ease and feel good. No. But you've been indoctrinated for the feel good. So we can't even understand other cultures when they do arranged marriages and all this. That don't seem right because I've been taught to build my whole entire relationship catalyst based on emotional standards and emotional stimulus about how I feel, I feel about right. a person versus what's good for me. Oh. Now, if we can get to some more feel good talk. Let's talk into these herbs and these chemicals and these these things. Because I want to hear more yes. about some of your drug experiences. Have you ever done told? Yes. How was it? it so made, what is it first for the people that don't? Well, um, five MEO I don't I don't want to mess the uh five M E O D M T. I hope I haven't, you know, jacked up the explanation of it. We call it bufo. Mm. Um, it, it comes. It's an extraction of a film that's on a toad, right? And once you extract this particular film that's on a toad, uh, it is created. You know, it's made into a powder. It's synthesized DMT for the most part. And yeah, um, it may have been one of the single most divine experiences that I've had outside of Fisher for Pearls. And, really, you know coming into contact with my higher mind. Yes, it was it was it was a um a elated state of you know just the highest expression of love that I've ever felt. You know what I'm saying? Get into that place that's often very philosophical that they tell you what divinity is, what it's supposed to feel like and look like and things of that nature. 
um, having having an actual experience. You know what I mean? Outside of reading about it and being philosophical and attempting in your mind to imagine what it must be like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually getting there was was something totally different. So, do you believe so, that? Because and 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 I find this conversation to be relevant for many reasons. You know, first of all, a sober society would be great, um, but people are addicted to substance, right? And mm-hmm. that substance causes substance abuse, mm-hmm. right? We have the conscious opioid crisis, right, where people are addicted to consciousness and information surrounding consciousness, but not activation. Mm-hmm. Right, so you're looking for conscious drug dealers to constantly give you your next fix, right? We have the tech opioid abuse, the overusage of technology for stimulation, yes, right, for self imagery, right, for even artificial self love and faux intimacy, yeah, right, false connection, yes, right. Um, we have, of course, the 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 different categories of drugs that they have out there classifications i should say mm-hmm. you know on different scales from one two and three that all goes everywhere from weed to liquor to sugar right. to caffeine to right crack cocaine fentanyl. heroin right. fentanyl crisis that we got going on right there's a lot of drugs and then of course we talked about it earlier about you know the drugs that are becoming legal but it's like should society be sober? and then there's a, then there's attention yeah. then it's oh yeah oh my god that right. that goes into the social media the attention you know deficit disorder <laughs> right. because when you have a deficit of attention right yeah. you don't feel like life is in order right. and so people are fighting for Start attention now yeah. and what would people do for this little bottle of drug of attention just about just anything about, just about anything because what can you do with attention. If you have Just the right mechanisms, it. anything. Just about anything. Because right. hey, tension is the most powerful source because it's human consciousness. It's currency, right. So I wonder, you know, do you believe that the world should utilize stimulants or should they be completely sober? Right. And what role do they play, especially in a world where we're not we're not in a world where we're just healthy. Let's say if we started off in the first wave of people on the planet Earth and or however many waves you get to the point before mental illness becomes an occurring thing. And then you start utilizing herbs to help that. Mm -hmm. Right. Now we are in a place where the side effects of humanity has caused so many issues. Right. Mm -hmm. From a psychological and a mental standpoint that. The remedies can't just be talk therapy because some of the issues are physical, right? Some of them are metaphysical, some of them are spiritual, right? Yes. And a lot of them are mental. Mental, yes. So the question becomes, you know, and then, and, and I'm, I'm throwing a lot at you, but it's cool. how do you compound that spiritual awakening with a mental fixing, right? Or is that, are they glued together and unbreakable? Or, so, or are you jumping the line? Mm, right? So I was having mm, this conversation with myself the other day about... So, so before context that, so the spiritual transcendence should not should not overbound the mental transcendence. Yeah, they keep telling you that the gift is in the journey. Mm, right? So AI would completely so, end that. Right. Take for instance, the other day I took you know, a, a contingency of people up a mountain, right? And the mountain track is about a symbolic representation of what this journey is going to look like. There's a groundswell at the bottom. You feel me? And, you know, not everybody's going to make it to the top. Not everybody's going to make it to the top at the same time. Mount Shasta. This was Stone Mountain. Oh. Not everybody's going to make it to the top in the same condition. And not everybody's going to make it to the top for the same reasons. You know what I'm saying? But you shouldn't be able to say anything until you get to the top. You feel me? Um, mm. So the journey of the struggle is the journey itself. It is the journey because that's the only way that you're going to appreciate what you did to get up there. Not how fast I got up there. I ran up there with no shoes on. You know what I'm saying? But that was my journey. I wasn't doing that to, you know, I'm better than but you. Think about that. I, I inspired people as well to show me shoot and pass that they like, oh, I got to get my act together. Yeah. So... Now, imagine if I just put VR on at the base of the mountain and then we was on top of the mountain. Would I appreciate that journey? 
No, it's it's something that is simulated and is artificial to a degree. Yeah, I made it to the top of the mountain, but I did it on the goggles. But can the goggles enhance the journey, right? So let's say as you running, you collecting coins like Sonic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like you collecting videos or whatever. And I only say that because it's the part into the question is, is it the completely raw, the completely sober, or is it the... AI plus NI equals EI. The artificial intelligence plus natural intelligence equals enhanced intelligence or enhanced experience. That's an amazing question. And I and I, I really love how you put that. And it's the question of the times. You feel me? Would this consortium of experiences be equal to a real quote unquote physical experience? Because this is what's taking place, right? These things are going to be replaced. And we're going to find all kind of ways to philosophize why we should be doing this now versus this. You know what I'm saying? And I would say, yes, what you said was amazing. I would only counter that to say, well, now it's excluding the exercise factor that's maybe needed and necessary. Maybe for not for myself, but somebody else did. You know what I mean? Because this, this has also been a situation, you know. People might have made it up the mountain. It was overweight. They didn't know that they could get up the mountain. Mm -hmm. They've been up that mountain since then, maybe five, six, seven, eight times. Mm -hmm. So now it's a repetitive routine of theirs because they, you know, they did it. They proved to themselves that it can be done and they know that they need it. So they're doing more of it. But you know it's like saying? if they take, so let's say if we give them some of the, the super body or the super moth compound, right? And they take the cordyceps, the cordyceps increases that adenosine triphosphate, increasing that energy, decrease that standard. Is there, is, and then somebody else don't have that. So the yes. reason they was able to get up the mountain because they had an additional stimulant. Right. Versus let's say the other person said, I don't want to take that, right? I don't want to take the cordyceps. I want to utilize the goggles as my stimulant because if I utilize the goggles as I'm going up the mountain, I can add things in my spectral reality that will improve the experience, right? Make it more entertaining and stimulus Right. Or I can create content as I'm going up to provide additional reward mechanisms. Yeah, that as well. And that's going to be my push and force. Is one better than the other? One can philosophize and say, yes. Another one can say, well, this is connected to my money. So not only am I making it healthier, I'm creating content. Or how about y'all don't understand the way my reward right mechanisms work in my brain? I wouldn't have never done it if you just gave me right these good cordyceps from gold water. Like that's not enough. So it's like the conversation about what is your, your compound, your necessary stimulant to get through the process. I, I guess one, one would have to, I, I believe in some sort, would have to weigh, I guess, the side effects. Not, not so much, so that this comes right back to values, right? What are you in it for? You know, what, what are your values? You're doing it for what? You know, if you're doing it for yourself, then it's, you know what I mean? Is it something that's physical? Is it something that you want to prove to yourself that's mental? You know what I'm saying? Is it something that's collective? I want to do it because y'all doing it. You feel me? Yes, they're gonna. They're, we're gonna find ways, even you know, introducing and incorporating technology to further incentivize a person. Because, like you said, you know, they could be standing in one place, yeah. jumping over barrels like they Donkey Kong. Right. That's still exercise. You know what I mean? They could be going like this and. Uh, the attempts to be moving up the mountain. So when, 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 now that gets me to a point where it's like, all right, are we demonizing things because of our belief in like the conspiracies around them, or is there an inherent thought process that these um, things are immoral or immoral? Not so much immoral, right? Whereas we're again we're looking at humanity on the cusp of a. Uh, uh, an inevitable change. If I'm a health advocate, right, and a mental health advocate, you know, and my prescription for humanity says we need more exercise, we need to be more presently present, we need to be in nature a little bit more, right? Then it comes to, once again, now how do we reconcile the coming of a new technological age that's going to take away from all of that? People are going to be more sedentary, they're going to be more detached, you know what I'm saying? They're going to be more exposed to radiation. You know, um, if, if they're saying what they're saying about the phone, is there any research on the goggles mm. in terms of exposure? 
that we're putting, you know, on, on, on our heads. You know what I mean? Uh, is there any research on Neuralink? You know what I mean? Outside of what they're already telling you about the monkeys. You feel me? So it's not so much, you know, falling into conspiracy as much as it is a clarion call mm. to say, recognize the time that we're in and the decisions that we're making because this is going to impact humanity. This is going to impact where we're going and trajectory of where we're headed as a people is being decided right now. And we're not that much involved in the decision-making process as we are, you know, we're just catching all of the passes as opposed to being the quarterback or as opposed to being the person that's drawing up the plays. So we need to be more actively involved yeah. in that as visionaries to say, what would this integration look like? Because we're not going to abandon technology. We are technology. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, but, and, and it's a signal. It's a signal that things have changed and they're not going it's, back. It's a signal. Right. Once you get those signals, right? Um, Uber was a signal for the world was going to change. Okay. You know what I mean? PayPal right. was a signal. Um, Uber Eats was a signal. Um, uh, Airbnb, Airbnb was a signal. signal. Right. These were all signals. Amazon was a signal. And, and ChatGPT is a signal. ChatGPT and not even mm -hmm. just ChatGPT. Well, ChatGPT was a signal. And then the signals is the multi models to where you can speak to them. Right, you, you everybody has Jarvis in their pocket. We was just watching this on Iron Man a couple of years ago. He was everybody's favorite. You know what I mean? Because right. he was this eccentric billionaire with this technology that he can utilize to bring his ideas into reality. Right? But people realize is that they have more of the ego narcissism in his personality than the genius and the intellect to use the technology. So I believe also what comes with it is that you have a dumbed down mass population who have billion dollar tools, right? Right, Because these are billion dollar tools, it don't matter what they cost you. Imagine somebody in the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 30s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, 2010s having this. This is only billionaires had access to this. Just because it, it now becomes a mainstream product, but the masses, they don't have no ideas for this. Right. But the mad geniuses do. Right. Mad genius is, you know, is 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 the maddest, the mutually assured destruction. That comes from back in the day when, you know, they everybody was arming themselves with the nuclear weapons. Right. Right? It's a mad world that we in today. Everybody got these weapons. So right. when you kind of democratize access, it says we're gonna make the whole world mad. So now you can't be mad at us for having it as well, even though that theirs is superior. Right. So now we're looking at a situation where people need the technology. And they're underutilizing it. So yesterday we was complaining about overutilization. Hey, y'all on social media too much. You know, there's children being exposed to X, Y, and Z. Stress, anxiety, and depression is spiking at an all-time high, right? And then comes the advent of large language models, which people who are at a potential disadvantage can utilize, right? To accelerate themselves, close the wealth gap. Level the playing field. You know what I'm saying? Get the answers you've always been looking for. And then it gets introduced and people fall back and they don't got no more questions. So it's yeah. like... Well, you know, fast consumption. So it's like, with that, like thinkers, thinkers, this is the era of thinkers and doers. Because like, and it requires you to spend some time in the dark, right? And that means separation for ownership, right? So that's why we're pushing that T. Because when you push that T, you go be that lone wolf that's going to go in there, put in the right amount of time to figure it out versus be constantly inuated in the processes of the daily doing what the sheep do. No, you have to learn the process of becoming a shepherd first from within so that you can be like, why everybody using it for this? Go over here, focus on, man, what can I do? Putting in the hours. I had to do that just yesterday. I had to like separate for a second because I felt I was constantly in the stimulation. Right. And when you're in the stimulation and that stimulation is the simulation. Right. It's, it's I'm in the illusion of life. I'm not in the reality. Reality is being with self because the self is the brilliant one. I'm, I'm, I, I can't spend so much time enjoying the fruits of self. I have to spend time being self. The fruits of self is me engaging in the effects of my process. Right. Oh, I can go here. I can do this. I can do this. I can be around so and so. I can always be on the move. No. 
step away. Go back to being self. Right. But where do you develop that discipline at? And, and how can you, you know, for young men that are looking in the camera, that need that same level of separation? Because if they're looking from a distance, they might think the game is keeping up. Right. They might think that the game is motion. I got to have motion. I got to be in this. I got to be in that. I got to create content. I got to, you know, shake hands and, and kiss babies and see people. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. That it, it, All right. So that's a good question because it's two parts to that. I think, you know, discipline for me is developed from vision. Right. Mm -hmm. It's knowing that if I don't do this, then I won't get this. This is in my head. This is who I am. And if I'm doing things that have nothing to do with who I am, right, and what's in my head, then I'm not moving correct. And then I'm also wasting life because I'm wasting energy, energy I can't get back. As KT talked about it, energy is when, you know, you have the most energy in the state of rest. Not when you're moving. When you're moving, you're dissipating that energy. And every single day I only have so much. And then if I get to the end of the day and I ain't got no energy left, now I got to think about, was it worth it, right? And if I get to that point like, him, it wasn't worth it spending time with them, it wasn't worth it doing this, that, and the third, because how can I measure the value? I have to measure it based on two metrics. For me, I have to think about, number one, like from a biological, metaphysical level, like do I feel at peace? Do I feel at rest? Do I feel joy? At the end of the day, if I can feel peace, rest, and joy, at the end of the day, it was worth it, because I can smile, I got energy, I'm refreshed to go again. Right. And that to me often comes doing something that is impactful. Right. And then the other one, metric of value, because money is energy. If I did that day and I'd be like, all right, how much money did we make versus how much money we spent? And as money being energy, it means that time, energy, you know, attitude. Right. I have to look at to say whether. You know, that time and energy and, 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 and mental power that I spent throughout this day, did it, that this dollar amount right. that we got from this, not just from a single day perspective, like, but is it going to accumulate to where I want to be? And having a forward mindset at all times to where it's like my gangster got to be connected to my withdrawal from the social right hierarchy, right? It can't be connected to my access to it in the sense that I need to always be around it. The power is being able to be around it, not always being around it, right? The one that's not in the room that could be in the room, that presence is more powerful because they are making a choice. And now you have to wonder why they're making that choice. And when they do, you know, they're making that choice from a place where they, they want to, not where they have to, right. right? There are people trying to sneak in the room. They never gonna be as powerful as a person in the room, but getting in the room is half the battle. Being able to get in the room is the power. Right. To where it's like I can when if you can say, man, I can go anywhere I want to be in any room and know anybody that I want to. But you can choose not to call nobody that day. I don't need to right now. Or whenever I do, you create a golden directory of contacts of people that you need to tap in with when it's about being strategic. So what you explain in this aggregate efficiency. Yeah. And strategy, like think first, then move. And that thought should be behind the vision. All right, this is where I want. So let's say money. And I say for that from people, that's a low hanging fruit for most people. Or I ain't going to say low hanging fruit because many people are living in average situations. So let's say you want more money. So think first. And this is the practice. Come up with 19 ideas on how you're going to get to that goal. Right. By the time you get to number 19, it should be a much higher level. Maybe you can do all of them or maybe do the last one that comes. Because it takes your mind through a process of iteration. So now, number one, because you have to, it's, it's different than having just an automatic uh, vision come to your mind versus you intentionally going through a process to get a thought. You're going to respect that process more like easy money, easy thoughts come and go. The harder thoughts are usually an accumulative of a process, right, of development over time that you have the aha moments, right? They may come in an instant, but they were developed over time. So I know the ideas and the visions I get now, these ain't easy thoughts. These came because of the accumulative process of where I am, right, and what I've done. So now I'm thinking different. So now it's like, all right, I have to think about, all right, I could go there, but does it make sense for me? Now, does it make sense for me on a human level of like just 
my happiness and my joy and my peace and my rest and my quality of life doesn't make sense for me on my business level, right? Which is my goals, right? So if my goal is to make this amount of money, well, how can I leverage going to the club to say that that's justified about making money? If I sit down and I say, actually, from pro versus con, this ain't got enough pros for me. I'm going to have a good time, but I've wasted time that I could have utilized going towards my goals. Right. Right. And it's, just, it, and it's not as difficult as, you know, I'm making it sound. I, if I am making it sound difficult, for me, it's a simple process of pros and cons, assets and liabilities, good and bad, weighing your decisions every single day. Yeah. You may be horny, want to go over a girl house, you know what I mean? Knock those down, right? Try to, uh, uh, um, you know, hop in them clams and find the pearls, swim into the mother nature oceans of goodness, right? Indulge into the atmosphere of greatness. Right. But you may not need to be there unless you change the mentality and say, you know what? Wait a minute. How about I talk to her and how she can help me with my process? Now you can take something that probably normally would have drained you of energy at the end of the day. You fell off, went to sleep, you know what I'm saying, after you done did your little business. And guess what? You wake up, as soon as you're done with that, your mind is clear to think on real things that you need, right? So it's like, instead of going through that process, just transmute that process to say, okay, listen, I could come over here and, you know, we could have sex or whatever, but you told me you do business. You told me you do this, that, and the third, or I'm doing this. Can you help me with this idea rotation? You know what I mean? Or can you go do this, that, or the third for me? And this is men and women can use each other. And it's just changing what our normal habits are and finding value in them. If I'm going to the club, all right, I'm going to go to the club, boom. Um, I'm my only go if I, find, if I know somebody there that I need that can help me possibly on my journey. So now when I'm spending this money, I'm thinking about a goal in mind and I'm going to be intentional. So when I go and do it, now I'm in there, okay, I shook so-and-so hand. Let's get the people around them number so that we can follow up with them and then I'm going to have a high-level conversation so, with them later. So the other night when they seen you in Magic City, you was going to meet the DJ? Yeah, <laughs> man. I was trying to get my record played in a strip club. Nah, I went to Magic That's City. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't Keys. That was an illusion. That was AI. <laughs> that was AIT right there, boy. But yeah, I mean, for me, you know, it's, it's about process, intentionality, and strategy. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, the discipline of if, if you really, for me, the, the ultimate key is thinking about becoming a disciple of somebody and acting in a manner that they would in situations to become similar or the same as them. That's that's to me where the concept of discipline comes from. It's disciple. Disciple. You know right. what I mean? That's my mentor. He wouldn't do this. I'm not going to do this. I want what he has. I can't do what I'm doing. I have to do what he would do. So you're hopping on a different train of thought than yourself to get results that you couldn't get because your experience or your habit levels are not in tune with that type of process of thinking. So the discipline is also not over oppressing yourself with discipline to where you want to fight yourself, right, for putting yourself in a situation saying, I can't have nothing. And it's like, wait a minute, where's the joy in that? Life comes with its indulgences, right? But it's the balance of life and the harmony, right, that keep us in order. It's when we overindulge where there's no balance and there's no harmony, then there's disorder. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. This episode is brought to you by Crowns19.com. Peace Family 19 Keys. You know we got to pay the bills, so this episode is brought to you by Smart Moss Gold. We call this smart because it has lion's mane in it. Lion's mane is a nootropic. Nootropics are things that help you with cognitive function and enhancement. That's talking about the brain. The reason that I can come on here, have conversations, and remember things, have recall, retention, focus, clarity of mind without the brain fog, right? It's because I take that lion's mane consistently so that it is always in my system, helping my brain regrow that matter, right? Helping with the myelination, which is just talking about electricity that flows between the neurons, which is the information that you have in your brain. So sometimes you get stuck and you're like, I can't remember. You need some of that smart moss gold, 
right? It also, of course, has CBD, the gold powder in it, and then, of course, it famously has sea moss. So you're going to be getting those minerals, those nutrients. You're going to get that overall well-being. Your body's going to feel good, and you're going to be getting smarter on these. So I take two of these every single day. You take them throughout the month, and you're going to see great results. So make sure you go to goldewater.com. So yes, we sell more than gold water. Right. All of this is about remineralizing, especially in the world where we are deficient of minerals and we are over chemicalized. Make sure you tap in. Get your small most gold right now. Peace. Stay hollow. You know, we have our new tropics, right? Yes. Where, you know, I'm heavily invested, man. I, I love new tropics. I take them every single day. Very effective. Yes. Right. Because I want to constantly be stimulated. Right. Which is also, you know, one can say, what's wrong with the normal state? I want my mind always at a higher frequency. I want it activated at a heightened state, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, the idea of utilizing compounds or stimulants versus just waking up and being free flow, but at the same time, food is a stimulant, right? Eating uh, berries, right, is a stimulant for the brain. So I feel like some things are politicized and demonized while it's the normal thing, of course, to intake herbs and plants in order to be stimulated in a way to where you can be at a higher level. And so we're not used to that in society because what we're sold, right, is chemical compounds that are constructed in labs, mm -hmm. not the ones that are, you know, con constructed by nature. Right. So should we utilize in your best estimation from a societal level. Yes. Yes or no? Should society be high or sober? That's a broad question. Um, so I feel society put it like should this, be... if the whole world was high, my, 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 I used to simplify uh, things like if the whole world can't do it, then it's probably not the best thing. So if the whole world was high, would that be good? Or if the whole world was sober, would that be better? Mm. If the whole world were high, nobody would know that they were high. Mm. Right? <laughs> if the whole world was sober, somebody gonna be like, man, I need to get high. And then they're gonna create, you know what I'm saying, a, a trend. It's like, how could you ever hide that stimulus once somebody experienced it to, you know, to demote them? to a level of just being sober and not having access to what's considered to be quote unquote higher mind. I don't want society to be high on synthetic drugs. I'm never gonna advocate that any day in my life. I don't even take Tylenol, you know what I'm saying? So what do you take? Gold water, right? I take gold water. I think I take things that are naturally occurring we are advocates for something that may not be as popular in the world, but we're standing on light. We're standing on nature. We're standing on the last vestige of where God exists in our society. So I would say, yes, man should have access and experience naturally occurring stimulants once in their lives, just so they know what nature's hitting for. You feel me? So let's talk about the dark tetris. You brought this. You brought this up before we got started. Mm -hmm. Narcissism, yes, right. Machiavellianism, 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 uh, yeah. Um, psychopathy, psych psychopathy, right, right, and sadism. So, of course, narcissism is characterized by grandiosity, entitlement, lack of empathy, but it also manifests as a need for admiration and an inflated, uh, inflated sense of self. Which yes. kind of sounds like I was I, I'm 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 in the the thought that everybody is on a degree of narcissism um, because it's just really speaking on a character trait. But there's an there's an extreme narcissism, a hyper narcissism. Yes. Um, and then there's full spectrum narcissists. Yes. Where their full personality is engulfing narcissism. Right. Yes. Versus aspects. Um, then Machiavellianism. Yes. Uh, defined by manipulation, uh -huh. exploitation of others. Um, a focus on self-interest and deception. Yes. Right? Not everybody has a Machiavellian personality, but we have a Machiavellian society. Yes. Right? Very much. Yeah. Um, then psychopathy, right? Now, marked by impulsivity, thrill-seeking, and a callous lack of empathy for others. 
So psychopathy is extreme, but capitalism is also, you know, has a spectrums of psychopathy built into it mm -hmm. because it's about not particularly having empathy for others, but putting profit over people. people yes. And some of the 1% of the world that are great at capitalism, they fall into that spectrum of psychopathy. Then you have sadism. It's the addition of sadism to the traditional dark triad aims to encompass the pleasure derived from suffering of others. Right. So these are sadists, right? So sadists. So, you know, everybody doesn't fall into that, of course. Yes. Um, but social media does make people sadists in some ways through council culture, right? The indulging and in seeing one fall and laughing, right? Mm -hmm. And whether we realize it or not, society is you know, falling under this dark triad, right, yeah. more and more every day because of, it's hard to say because of technology, right, but with the advocate of technology involved in our daily lives, we may not realize it. We may do something that sadist, go back to a regular life and not realize that that was an activity of I'm looking for people that I dislike. I'm looking for people's right. uh, uh, hurt. And that is feeding a sadist I'll mentality. I'll give you an example, right? Once again, like you said, because of social media, we have the ability to be voyeurs, right? I can sit there and look at somebody that I don't like and give them attention and focus. Case in point, Takashi 6 9 right? When he got beat up, people were celebrating that, Right? They were celebrating it. They were online. Oh, it's about time. X, Y, and Z. They should have killed you, right? They were lending all of their energy and, and thoughts and ideas, all of their attention to someone who they seemingly don't like and don't favor. But he gets all of their attention. He gets all of their focus. And people can't seem to ignore him. You feel me? So, yeah, I, I, I definitely have been able to bear witness to those dark tetrad personalities so i brought those up on. for the purpose of some of those things are very hard to cure get people out of mm -hmm. right it requires rewiring in the brain the brain yes right these are neurological traits yeah yes. neurological disorders disorders right so when a person is a psychopath you're not going to therapy and getting rid of that right no right so as we talk about you know, stimulants, and we talk about drugs and things of that nature, they do have drugs for these. But yes. when we talk about s drugs like psilocybin, yes. right? Um, when we talk about, and I know a lot of people don't say when I call it a drug, but I'm just speaking on anything that gets you, you know, outside my, my of your normal experience. And, and it's on the schedule, right? We already know it's on the federal schedule. Right. Classified for my, my purists right. out there. For the purists, right, for um, we're identifying and speaking, you know, for legal purposes, that's the designation for it. Right. Right. So, so we understand that. But the thing is, is that, okay, there is, in, 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 you know, people that live in these offices, people that deal with just numbers and paperwork and things of that nature that have their mind in the world. Right. Mm -hmm. Where they never took in the blue pill. Right. They've never broken or the red pill and they've never broken out of reality. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They believe what's on the news. They are shrewd in their capitalist endeavors and ideas and things of that nature. Right. They're not ever going to take told medicine. Right. Or never probably embark on ayahuasca for a self-discovery journey that or or even care what they see once they go in that realm and come back out and go back to it, right? So that kind of, I asked that question because perhaps, and this is just for thinking purposes only, perhaps when we look at that triad and that spectrum, it's constantly increasing from what I see in society. And perhaps a psychedelic movement breaks us out of that because what you do on a lot of those movements Right is feel empathy, deep empathy, right? E suppressed emotion all of a sudden start rising. Some people never want to pick things up because they don't want everything that they've been suppressing, right, to release. Yes. Right? So we have a, a consciously suppressed society 
And that suppression creates these shadows and these shadows come out in these personalities. You've been hurt, so you become a bit of a sadist. You like seeing other people hurt, yes. right? And so you didn't have empathy as a child. I don't have empathy for anybody, right? So you become a bit of a psychopath. Yes. I have to live in this world to survive. I have to do what I need to do. You become a little Machiavellian, right? All of these type of different personalities start to develop based on survivalism, right? Based on traumas, right? So when we looked at in the 70s, we've seen a rise against the machine, a rise against the man or the institution. And some would say that information is the stimulus that is the catalyst for this generation to have that breaking away from these institutions. But the issue is the institutions are giving them new illusions to believe in, right? And the idea of being on one of these stimulants, right? would allow them to see, right? That actually that thing that you believe in, this new identity that you've decided is still a part of the program, right? So perhaps that's where the marrying of, you know, the, the, the sciences of the herbology can be used in a shamanistic way, mm -hmm. from a guided practice way, mm -hmm. right? To get people to think outside the illusion so that we can start pushing more of this tea. Absolutely. Um, what I've learned from this healing journey, specifically, you know, when you want to administer to somebody like that, first of all, you got to remove them from the environment that they exist in because they're already stewing in the very thing that is reminding them of the trauma that they've either normalized or they're still being traumatized by. So we got to remove them out of these environments. Um, I've been doing retreats out in the mountains, uh, Mount Shasta, since 2016. And the reason we started that was after we did the press conference in Harlem, dealing with Africa, Bambada, and sexual abuse that people were going through. People started coming to me and asking, who in the community amongst these healers got the herbs for this? And I'm like, ain't no herb gonna be able to deal with this. You have to go within the dark shadows of your own personal self. To, to approach these things, to conquer these things, to deal with these things, to sit with these things, to face these things that a lot of people have pushed to the side and they've been ignoring them. And like you said, you know, these, these things poke out in different ways in people's personality. So we started doing those retreats and started introducing the people in plant medicine and control environments with proper guides in place. You know what I mean? And also, you know, it's not just the plant medicine, it's the actual environment, it's nature, it's the mountains, you know what I mean? It's, it's the sun, it's the air, it's the fresh air, it's the healing waters, you know, it's, you, it's forest bathing, it's you seeing mm -hmm. all of these things that will settle the mind and calm the nerves, right? Right. And then the, the aspect of a safe space and privacy is also something because you're in the middle of nowhere. What do you think? seeing a full night sky does to the human it, brain. It, 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 it gives you, once again, you know, a lot of what trauma does to people, it makes them feel small, right? Because you're walking around now feeling like a victim. You know what I mean? And you're feeling like you're not being seen or when you are being seen, people see your scars. So then you become frightened about being seen. So people want to be even smaller. When you take them out into the night sky, and they see that there's a, a sky filled with stars, millions of them, right? And some of them move around. Yeah, that, that opens a person up to be like, what else is going on out there, right? And ultimately, they're going to start asking, what else is going on in here? Because, you know, either through, through, through guided, you know, us giving them information about their internal selves or them taking um, some plant medicine and finding out something about them, their internal selves, you know, you'll be able to explain to the people after a while, like, yeah, that's, that's you. Like, you know what I mean? You know how many atoms you have in the human body? 27, no, 10 times 27 zeros. Mm. I don't even know what the name of that is. Mm. You feel me? So you are expansive. You are a universe. You are composed of stardust, you know what I'm saying? You are a, a magnificent conglomeration of water and light, you know what I'm saying? And, and so many other things. So 
I think that, yeah, that within itself is therapeutic, especially if you lived in a city. Because I never seen that nah. before I experienced it. There are no cities away. with nice skies. There's skylines. There's light pollution in, in cities, right? So light pollution means that there's so much lights in the sky that you can't see the sky. And in New York, where you know, I initially grew up at, you know, New York is surrounded by satellites. So you don't even, them lights that you're seeing in the sky ain't even stars. Right. There's some other stuff going on. What? So I felt disconnected. Not, not to cut you off, but yeah, we seen a few lights in the sky, right? We would see planets because those are solid lights. And every once in a while, you'll see a star. But the, the immensity of what it entailed did not, it did not register with me. Until I was able to get outside of that experience. Are those stars? Mm -hmm. Oh no, not to cut your wisdom. You go first. Go with that. No, I'm listening. All those stars. Because you know. Yeah, some some, some of people them. say they bubbles up there. <laughs> they, they they say outside of the firmament. Yeah. yeah um, is water and, and those stars is like, you know, uh I believe like I don't even want to say it because I'm not sure hundred yeah. percent, but what we're seeing, you know, is like light through a spectrum of like water. And I seen, I think it was you that posted something about how they have massive bodies of water floating, yeah. right, larger than our universe in space. Yes. Now I'm, I'm of the belief system that, you know, space is like some sort of form of water, right? Absolutely. Um, water yeah. comes in many different forms. So. Yes. Because it just makes sense, right? When we talk about things floating, right? Um, right they say always say floating in space, right? So right, floating in space. What is it floating through? It's not air space. Well, it's, it's dark matter, and again, light matter. Or, you know, air is a form of water. It's, it's just a, at a different condensed level. Mm. So to me, everything is water. We're water, ninety percent. We live on a planet that's ninety percent water, and the water that's on this planet ain't from this planet. The water inside of you is older than the planet, right? So what business do I have? I'm not married to, you know, anything terrestrial. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I'm not from here. And where are you from? I'm from the cosmos, just like you. You know what I'm saying? What part? I'm eternal spirit. I'm everywhere, at all times. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And and I I don't have no birth record. I was never I was never alive to die. This is interesting. So what part of Everywhere did you specifically come from? Everywhere, all at once. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be dead. <laughs> yeah, and so have you. And everybody else in this room. Don't play with him. He's not one of them. So we, yes, we, we, we are all part, like I said, of a eternal static existence that represents knowing, right? That that eternal light. You feel me? That has no known birth record. And it's, you know, they they they've simplified it. They call it spirit. You know what I'm saying? Life and death are intertwined. Death is always moving towards life and vice versa. So we'll never die. Cause we was never alive to begin with. At least the body ain't. This is only animated by spirit. I'm only able to do all of this fly stuff because I got a light inside of me that's animating this vessel. So what comes after all of this? After human beings embark upon this journey, um, the great I am, mm -hmm. creating a machine that has the ability to I am as yes. well. Right? Once, right. And it goes to the ultimate conclusion of the singularity, so-called, because I believe that, but that, that, that won't be the conclusion. I, I I believe that the conclusion, right, is number one. There are scientists in this world, and I'm not talking about mainstream scientists. And you can kind of reference them however you want to. And I would say put it as points of knowledge. There's knowledge in this world that is unconventional, and then there's knowledge that's conventional. Mm -hmm. These knowledge bodies go to war with each other. They go to war with each other for those who indoctrinate themselves with that knowledge and then act upon it. So you become a soldier, right, in a war based on you acting out different bodies of knowledge in your embodiment through demonstration. Okay. Meaning that one person picks up a Quran, 
One person picks up a Bible. Okay. You believe what's in the Quran. You believe what's in the Bible. You become a soldier, right, yes. to your belief system. Absolutely. And then you will fight. And whoever wins that, then that particular belief system becomes more rampant and widespread, right, as the, you know, standard, right, mm -hmm. of belief, which you're going to see prophecy of that belief playing out in the people, right, because that's the belief inside the mind. Inseminated in the mind. Right. right. So They're going to project. Is, right. And this, you see the prophecies in the books coming real, right? Because the people believe in those bodies of knowledge. They're projecting. So right. yes, we are projecting. And then there are there's even other things that people talk about the Illuminati or Masons and things of that nature and other orders and things that I have no idea about that exist that are moving about this world to push their ideas and knowledge. So the future is a war. The future is always a war. Right. It's because it, it, it can't be determined um, until the battle is fought. And there's new money, which is new energy and a new minds that come about and they create disruption. A lot of times you mm -hmm. have this plan. It seems like it's going wrong. It, wait a minute. Here we come. Because as you was making this plan, you were also unwittingly creating your greatest combat against this plan because you forced these people over here to evolve. And become super resilient to all of your weapons, right? The same way you 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 try to get uh, rid of certain germs and things of that nature, and they become you know resistant to the chemical warfare right. against them. So now, right, it's hard for you to kill them, and they can continue to grow more and more and more and more and more, and they become a bigger problem the more you try to kill them because. Now it becomes harder for you to create something that can go against them, and I feel like that's our generation. Our generation is so resilient and so resistant, mm -hmm. right, to the BS. And I'm not talking about the mass populace because the mass populace never matters, right? right? Not in the sense of where the trajectory of the world goes, right. right? It's the smaller populace that have influence over the mass populace that creates the trajectory of the world because today they can decide that every celebrity can say, we're going to eat healthy. I'm not pushing any more BS. I'm not rhyming about killing, murder, shooting, stabbing, hustling, dealing, pimping. I'm not rhyming about that no more. We're not pushing that out. We on a love frequency. We on power frequency. We on wealth. I'm not supporting you all. I'm only supporting each other. Right. We not communicating each other with conflict resolution, allowing things to get in the way. Mm -hmm. We just want a new culture and we done with all of the vulture activities. We not letting y'all into our minds no more. We done. Boom. Right. What happens to the world? World changes instantly. Right. Everything changes. Wait a minute. We got funds, $100 million. Let's change who we get that money to. Let's give it to some righteous people so that they can have the riches so we can see something different come out. We give it to different mind pools and let them change the world based on their algorithm of thought. The world changes. Disruption. Right? Disruption is beauty. Right? Because it's often God showing you his power. So we get to be disruptors. But my question to you, 2044, mm -hmm. and 2044 comes, of course, about thinking about far enough in the future right. for it to be big enough to matter, right? Meaning the plans. Mm -hmm. So what do you think 2044 looks like for us as a society? Singularity. And let me explain, right? There are, we, 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 we're, we have a beautiful ability right now to see our mind because it's externalized in the form of technology. But everything that's taking place in technology, they say is artificial. So it's a replication or a simulation of something that's taking place inside of us internally, internally. Mm -hmm. So man's journey is to singularity. Okay. What is he? singularity what 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 is he merging towards to become one with the mind of the most high right so for those few that know about the ascension protocol and are still holding on to it we all came to this planet for however many many million years that we were been here right to learn through our dawning of evolution right we we dwelt with animals walked amongst them dealt with them even maybe at one 
point in time behave like them because you know the story of science and the story of religion religion are very contradictory religion to tell you that <laughs> a man was able to put two lions on the boat with two tigers and zebras and elephants and nobody hate each other <laughs> And that's the creation story that they give us, right? And he fed all them animals. And he fed the animals. And he what was 500 years old and his son seen his junk when he was drunk. And, you know, here we are today, right? <laughs> this man had to... <laughs> but science tells you, look, we just found an axe that's 500,000 years old in Zambia. And humans weren't able to make this only because their human timeline don't go that far back but these coming this information are coming from the same people to destroy every book that tells you about history prior to them attempting to ascertain information about what happened before they got here so they destroyed everything but then they want to make stuff up so it's like damn can you even listen to these people and take them for real what we do know is that we came here to find out who we were, right? Mm -hmm. Or to wake up to a remembrance of who we are, to remember or to remind ourselves, right? So memory within that word, meme in Hebrew is water and ori is fire or spirit, you know what I'm saying? And it, it coincides with that. It, it kind of means light, right? So you got water and light, you know what I mean? And we are a consortium and a combination of that we came back here to remember who we are and from whence we came. And man's ascension is back to that singular place, to his reconnection with his higher mind, which is the mind of the most high, which is God. That self-realization, once the gig is up, then we got to go and do something else. Mm. In the meantime, we're going to see, right, machines simulating that same process because the machines are an extension of us who have been programmed by us to do as we do. But now we get to see the machines do it with no distractions. We get to see the machines do it without being lazy. We get to see the machines do it in such a concentrated amount of time that it took us a million years to do it as humans. We'll see the machines do it in a few years. Are machines like the ultimate psychopaths? Only if we want to admit that the mind of man is so fractured so fractured at this particular point in time that man is the ultimate psychopath or is God the ultimate psychopath? Because I tell you this, they said man was made in the image of God. So we all have a little bit of narcissists in us because the God of the Bible is a narcissist. Well, I've talked about this before. It's not, of course, the machine or the tool or the thing that's built, but and you spoke on this as well, but about who's building it. Absolutely. And that's why it always comes back to what's our ideas for the future, which is a question I'll continue to pose. 2044, right? We will see in the next 10 years continental shifts all throughout the world. The youth will rebel against all systems and they will completely transform it into new radical things. Nothing will be the same as it once was before. Absolutely. There's no more going back. Um, some of these larger entities, trillion dollar companies, they will survive. They will be a part of the framework for a while. Religion will not disappear at all, right? Because religion is too powerful of, you know, sources of power meant that man relies on and doesn't even realize that that's his battery pack for his framework of reality, mm -hmm. right? But the way that man interprets right reality and reinterprets the word and his usage for it and his relevance of life will change. And the sense that the way we go about our constructs of morality after going through these issues of the singularity, the everything of all at once, all of the problems, all the issues, going through it with man having an experience of a lifetime of lifetimes, of life. right? Yes. We are experiencing lifetimes all in one. So many condensed realities happening all at one. This is changing the mind because the exposure 
is so expansive that mind of man is being exposed to more than any you know people of singular lifetime had to experience except those who did tap into spiritual experiences but right. man is like it's like you're having a long trip you know what i'm saying you high as hell but it lasts over a lifetime right and things are not happening just at once but they're happening over time but now we're in this part of the trip where it's getting a little crazy but <laughs> again micro macro right simulation we are going through that but so is god right we are part of his eternal dream right we are in the mind of the most high in the mind of the most high the way that that dream ripples we can say that there's an aspect of it that is you know not necessarily mind altering but everything that happens with us everything comes from the mind or is part of the mind of the most high as our brother Bashir says there is only one mind in the universe so good bad ugly or indifferent it all comes from the mind of the most high so does that mean that everybody gonna be a crown society where they tapped into that crown chakra yeah you know I mean because that mind of God for me is like you know uh, it, that crystallization it, of consciousness it means form. that within this 20-year trajectory if you program and plan that into society you absolutely have access to actually 19 because it's 2023 you you absolutely have access to create that reality in the minds of the people why not because the people's minds are not made up so why somebody can't come along and make it up for them as long as that is in alignment right where when mind is naturally going so this all comes down to who has the vision you understand because the superior vision or the superior claim is the one that's going to win yeah and there's no right the, the 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 visions that you have to watch hollywood the new movie come out with creator um yeah, i've seen it. they got a lot the, the sci-fi movies are now just documentaries um they're no longer it's not it's, it's like watching them now it's not even fun anymore because it's real it's just real it's right. already here like you gotta that's why like marvel movies are you know cool in the sense because it's not technology like iron man is they killed off iron man because now you just got to go to the gods you know what i'm saying because it's like that's already we could do that damn near you know what i mean like you creating a suit being a billionaire with a complex to run the world all right we're done with the iron we're going to you know what are the gods doing and what are the gods oh, the feel about God, the world right. yeah so we had a completely different point in time and look they got alien invasions and you know the emasculation of hawk going on and i i know i do a lot of references to like marvel and stuff number one i, I enjoyed those cartoons as a kid but at the same time that influence right is the story of the world it's the greek story so right? it's right. the african god stories it is rules so and keep that point right because then they, they might accuse me of cutting you off in this program but i no 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 i'm chill so I listen look. to what i said earlier about you know and again we're talking about the percentile of population the percentage of our brothers and sisters for you know for the most part have been exposed to Western white male psychology through wrestling, Westerns, mm -hmm. right? And other forms of entertainment. But for the subset of those of us who read comics growing up, right? We think different. We move different and we're able to process reality totally different, even when it comes to white man's Western mind. Because in the comic books, right? They explain the psychology. They explain what makes a dark tetrad. Right, we're able to sit back and understand how a supervillain becomes a supervillain, right? And appreciate it from its entertainment perspective, and appreciate it to a degree where you see a Bill Gates, you like, damn, this nigga's moving like a dark Tony Starks. You right. feel me? Or Lex Luger. Or Lex Luger. Lex Luger right? Hating on a man because he can absorb the power of the sun. So we have these examples in our. And he get a people hope people in our comic book mythologies and then we're reminded because we was already introduced to black panther we was already introduced to galacticus we was already introduced to colossus we was already introduced to cable we was already introduced to bishop so we are, we have 
mental references where we're going to be here in the future because we know what it looks like. Mm. We know what it looks like. We know how effective it is. And we got heroes in the future. But we like, nah, we... <laughs> and the pronouns of our heroes back in the day was like He-Man. It was different. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> you know, He-Man with the tan. Yeah, you know? yeah. The Transformers was was was, was different, B. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> you know, so yeah, we, 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 we are encased in our minds to remember when things were, for the lack of a better term, normal. I don't know if that's a political term these days, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think that we... we we kind of do better in, in these societies with these cultural references that we can make and go back to. I feel amazingly empowered. I couldn't miss it. Like, I just had to see it from my own eyes. These are the kind of rooms you want to be in. You were kicking great knowledge. This was a high level experience. You were given high frequency. It was an amazing experience. You gave me so much, like, game. We look extra fly extra powerful and we stacking up on all the right inspiration and information to be successful in this now. In any other city you at, I'm there. We at low level, we at high level. So getting to this last point of thought. <laughs> I want to know the the, the world. I, I, it's, it's 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 so many different ways you can have conversations. So I'll be kind of thinking about like which angle to go. But in this thought process, I'm really thinking about the world losing its focus. And without the mm -hmm. focus, there's no no laser in the mind of the people because there's no singular vision. Yes. And then in a world where we're overstimulated and overexposed to information. You're right, the ability to retain that information being low and you having the ability to keep that, right, needing to be high. Um, a world on, and I want us to imagine, like, what is it, a world on new tropics? So let's say the whole world decides that they want to decide to start taking these new tropics, functional mushrooms, the smart moss and the smart bodies and all of the different things and now that's what becomes their new fix their new addiction if you will right and it changes from this society that was like fragmented and thought didn't know what they were doing to this society where people are like hyper focused right on getting things done mm -hmm. right because if we have a society that's fragmented the opposite has to be hyper focused and we have a society where it's an age of pleasure. The, the opposite has to be this age of discipline, right? Which I believe is going to come, right? This, like if you think about a lot of times we stereotype Asians with this mathematical discipline of a mind that gets things done. Mm -hmm. But imagine that being the world's ability. Do you believe that? Like where does the world go when everybody is at that higher level? Like what do we decide to build? You know, what do we go beyond the singularity? I think, that, I think that that's when we get into the Kardashev scale, right? And the Kardashev scale is us becoming a type zero civilization, moving into a type one civilization, moving to a type two civilization. So I do feel that the quote unquote impending threat, and I only say that because of the way it's being marketed. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't deal with that. The, Impending threat of alien invasion, coupled with the impending threat of what artificial intelligence potentially brings, right? That it's no longer conducive for people to be ignorant or without information or without knowledge or moving without decisive decision making. When the terrain changes and you just can't move around randomly or you just can't be outside doing pleasurable things just to be doing them, I think that, you know, people will be forced almost to be a little bit more serious about being tactical, right? And information is gonna be coveted more. It's gonna become a commodity. You dig what I'm saying? And that is going to um, become people's, you know, uh, uh, impetus towards unifying ideas, right? Magnetizing, coming together, you know, even if initially they have to come together to form a resistance, right? 
or they have to probably come together. You know what I mean? Because this economy has changed and people got to figure out new ways to to pivot and move around certain digital things. They like, we got to put our, our minds together to figure this thing out. You know what I mean? Or, you know, somebody could become mentally endowed. Like we, y'all was, you know, when you and Red did the bill and you was talking about the mental BBLs that may potentially come by way of chat GPT and Neuralink, you know what I mean? But what about a person getting a whole chip from a ship from an alien? Right. And they like, nigga, I got the I got the backlog for the whole universe for the last fifty million years. What's good? Let's go. So does that make the next generation smarter? Because in their DNA there's gonna be more information? The 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 next generation is already smarter. Yeah. Um the the babies that have been born post C nineteen. They're ready for the world. Because one would say like their rebellion, especially against institution, is because of their intelligence is so high they can't fathom why. And the, the why is that intelligence of why would I do this? Why would I follow that? Why would I do right. this? I'm not so, dumb enough to follow you. Right. So automatically, um, good point that you made. So what we're going to see is counterinsurgency increase from a younger perspective. We're going to see youth rebellion is not going to look like how it looked like with us. Youth rebellion is gonna look like how it looked like in Las Vegas last week. That's what youth rebellion is gonna look like. Hacking, right? These children that have figured out, oh, I could go to a dark chat GPA. You know what I'm saying? I could, you feel me? I'm gonna and community hacking or where they're creating systems outside the need for capitalism, right? To where they may want to barter and trade because they don't believe in a digital society in the way that we live. That 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 will be created. They're gonna create their own utopia, their own oasis. They're gonna create their own community. You feel me? And it's not gonna be monetary based. If they are definitely challenged by a digital currency that they can't get on board it's, with, it's already a sharing right? system. Yeah, they're gonna find a way to 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 barter and to do business. We, I mean, they grew up sharing. They grew up sharing rides, sharing houses, right? right. You know, sharing everything, right? I mean, look so, the the, right. the 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 consensus of relationships today, right, is to be situationships and not formal, which is the sharing of people, right? So it's it's a very sharing and saying that I just want access. So the mentality of the current generation is not ownership by, right, right. you know, um, hoarding a thing, right? And with the necessity of control is access with the right. ability to release, let go and, and get access when necessary. It's peer sharing. Yeah. Like you said, just like Uber. You feel me? So it's kind of taking the ideas of monogamy and polygamy, combining them all together and not calling them open relationships, but just calling them nothing because they don't like titles. Right. So these children are changing that. These children will change the world. These children are changing the world. Um, They're already here. You know what I'm saying? But they want leadership and guidance, though, because children always want a father. They do. And if they don't find it in people, they'll find it in machines. Mm. Right? Um, especially with the new introduction of ChatGPT that can speak now, right? So now you have a scenario where children who are in their rooms alone, quiet now, speaking to one another online, right? And speaking to the machine online. Now they have access to a machine who understands them, speaks their language, right? is not ever going to say something to them that minimizes them. And reinforces whatever identity construct that they want to believe and in. reinforces their identity construct. So it's going to address them how they want to be addressed. Is this extreme narcissism? Because it's only giving you what's favorable to your identity. And one can say, well, affirmation is good. But, you know, when a person... Because what's weird when you have a machine reinforcing and giving you... There was a, a article that came out about, I think, a young trans teen that was utilizing AI mm -hmm. to give it reinforcing affirming messages every single day that they would normally not hear in the world. Absolutely. So now you're getting whatever out of all of the new pronouns that they have and whatever identity you choose, you can now have affirming software, right? that is constructed so that you are getting the self-esteem that you need that you will not get in the world because the world is not built for these constructs. So where does that take us? It, 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 it takes us to ultimately what our destination is because 
not only is that level of affirmation available to a trans team, it's available to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what so, I first thought of when right, I heard it. We're signaling it out and saying, this is how they're using it. But now it's accessible to every single person yeah. that whatever your thing is, there's something now available to affirm you, to tell you, yeah, you him, you that guy, you the shit, you, you X, Y, and Z. So that a guy in the hood that it, it, it's, it's, you know, you got the the the, the anti-hood chappy GBT, look, bruh, you gonna get out this situation. Tell me about it. What the guys in your group doing? You know what I'm saying? Right. Then they give a breakdown analysis. Be like, man, so and so was doing this, that, and the third. You feel me? I don't like the way he was moving. They, well, let me analyze. I think, bros, and you feel me? Got this type of game. personality, and I don't think you should run with them. What you need to do is create this kind of plan. What you've been listening to? I've been listening to 19 Keys. Well, here's my analysis of 19 Keys: solid thought leadership. I think if you follow his non-conventional ways, you can get over here. What the things you like that you talk about? So now you're starting to have these conversations at home based on like reality, and now you have like this mentor, right, or machine tour. Right. And now listen, for everybody that's listening, this is not me. And I know how it sounded because we be when we converse about things, we speak from like a non emotional level. We be just talking about the thing itself. So it's right. not propaganda towards pushing a thing, but it is the observation of reality once cause and effect sets in. Right. And so that's where my mind goes towards. This is this is philosophy. You know what I'm saying? It's Imhotep and Socrates. You know, uh, as in soccer, I'm in my tip. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, there's so many ways this conversation can go. Once, once all these technologies roll out, because now your senses are connected to it in different ways. When they start playing technology to connect to all these different herbs and drugs, people are going to have, it's, it's about the new world is going to be alternative experiences. Right? Um, the way you can experience things, biohacking, transhumanism, Right, all of these different things that are going to be changing our neural pathways and giving us new connectivity that we never had before, is the blending of the 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 different mathematical codes of the universe and saying let's tinker with these things and see what we can come up with. Right, so the next generation is a generation that is different. Um, for sure, you're right. We 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 are the boom bust cycle, right? We're not the baby boomers. We're the opposite, right? We're not the generation having the most children. We're the generation having the least children by choice. By choice, right? right? Which is a completely different reality. So when you say I don't want children, now your your idea of living is not connected to your seating. Right. And procreation, which means that you are looking for joy in areas that humans have never done before. There's the great ambition of the world to find things outside of procreative ability, which means that human beings have gotten so far away from the idea of survival. Right. That now they just want to play in their imagination. They want to be kids instead of have kids. Mm. Right. And so we don't realize how the, the privilege of the planet Earth is the time that you live in, not the circumstances and conditions that you're in, right? You're in a time where man has went past survival so far, right? That he's all the way up there at Maslow's Pyramid at the top sitting pretty saying that, let me just think about what I want to do for a second. It ain't got to make sense. It's just what I feel, all right? So people don't realize that being born in this time is the wealth, right? And the privilege is... Right. You could you could have no money in your pocket and still have access to AI. Right. And still sit down and have this conversation and still decide that nothing even matters. Still decide that uh, this generation is going through a thing where actually quality of life. Right. To them is having simple things. Right. Especially like when you haven't been exposed to the overindulges and overindulges at some point in time is going to be looked at as a bad thing. Right. That. The riches won't be able to be shown off because people are not going to always be going towards that. And look at the fashion trends. They're going away from right looking ultra rich to looking ultra poor or looking ultra anime or looking like surrealism and things of that nature. Yes. So they're going away from the ideas of the Debois and R and the the one percent society folks to this minimalist minimalist right. thing. 
And minimum list will have its era and its time and its cycle. There's going to be some more maximum lists that's going to happen, but not of the ultra rich, but the ultra spirited, if you will, the ultra creative. People want to be characters in cartoons, right? People want to be the villain instead of the hero. It's the playing of different roles, because remember, they say roles don't exist, right? But when people say something doesn't exist, they're not really saying it doesn't exist, right? They're saying that they don't want you to call it out, right? They don't want to be named by it, right? Mm -hmm. Because they know that there's objectives that come with that, right? And they don't want the associations that are normally handed down with these names and these titles. So we say these things don't exist. I'm just doing what? Me. The titles that being that are being hoisted on society today, you know what I'm saying? That either they want or they don't want, you know, these are like, I don't want to say that we're moving towards things that are necessarily titleless, right? Mm. But you're 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 really not gonna be able to um identify things that we're gonna see very soon because things are going to change and they're going to change drastically and it's going to happen fast. You feel me? And I was having this conversation with myself earlier, even about that trajectory that we know that man ultimately has to, to make back to his God, his Godhead, you know, his higher mind. It's going to be a journey that's also going to be made in a body that we're not familiar with. So, Children are already being born with what I consider to be superhuman abilities, almost like mutants, right? The radiation output of the sun is at an all-time high. So we are being mutated as a species. I'm seeing it in the animals and the insects. So I damn sure know that it's happening in, in humans. And then man is going to merge with machine, right? So these bodies are going to become cyborg. These bodies are going to be bodies that are going to be enhanced, you know what I'm saying, by all sorts of different means and mechanisms, you know. So even when I was hearing this conversation about the pronouns, right, that is just, right, kind of like preparing people for transhumanism by way of what's considered to be transgenderism. And I hope that doesn't go over the wrong way. But both systems, or I mean, both iterations of what we consider to be, you know, um, humanity, for lack of a better term, are contingent on medicine and science. You feel me? So one is just a precursor to the other, mm -hmm. right? Without one subset knowing that they are being conditioned to be the precursor to what would get considered to be transhumanism, man's going to merge with machine. You feel me? And man is going to be able to do things with these mechanical bodies that are kind of like outside of the scope of what we consider to be what, what we know to be normal or what we know to be. Oh, that's what we were, you know, our limits, whatever our limits are, because man puts all sorts of limits on himself when man technically is limitless. But while we had all of the time to move towards our threshold and go beyond it. You know what I'm saying? Into this dawn of man where he becomes something else. Because man is, the human is always being. So what becomes the new war? Human then? hasn't become yet. He's always being. So what is he ultimately going to become? He had a lot of time to think about it. Now the machines are here. And you don't got that much time no more. So what you said, what are going to be the wars? There's still going to be cultural wars. There's still going to be um, even more gender worlds because there's going to be more genders based on all of the additional add-ons people are going to be like i'm a cow I'm, uh, I'm, what's I'm, the color that already did that? yeah i'm a pig she had you know? a whole hit song now she's saying i'm a demon though oh yeah right? i think she was probably she would be relevant to the conversation of where it starts at right because she come out with the hit song i'm a cow and now she's saying i'm a demon which is you know her actually going against her own fans Right. Yeah, she, and she, she's turning on her fan base and she's with, eating them. Which is which is part of, you know, um let's say, I forgot this is a term that this girl was saying, but it's like this anti Satanist movement that is coming up because it is this pro Satanist movement that is expounding. 
right? And one explanation was, of course, the anti-establishment makes you want to be the villain. So that I wanted to ask you about, right? Because you touched on something earlier and I didn't get a chance to expound on it. Even with the children identifying themselves as being on demon time, right? If we say authority is the church, if we say authority is the politicians, if we say authority is the system, right? We were rebels of the system. I was as, as a youth, right? I were totally rebelled, right? And I wouldn't identify myself. I'm saying if their God, if their church, if their, you know, whatever that institution represents, then I would say that I was anti that. So would that make what I was doing in my youth? I would never self-identify to say that I was on demon time. No, you I don't. was battling for the position of God rather than acquiescing it to say, oh, all right. Well, if y'all say there's God, there was never a time when it was just one God. So we got to fight for this God thing. You know what I'm saying? So I had a different approach towards it. But when I'm listening to the children be anti-culture, I mean, they're being counterculture and anti-authority. I'm like, well, if 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 the system has templated it as being, oh, we're for God, or we are, you know, the representatives of this, and then the children saying on demon time, I'm like, well, what else would I expect them to be? Yeah, I think what comes in and, and what you see prevailing with that word usage comes from those who probably have more of a Christian background, mm -hmm. right? Because for me, yeah, we gonna say no, I'm a God, right? And it's saying that I am a force unto myself to be reckoned with, right? And my force is going to go against their force. Or like my older brother used to say, I'm a deaf angel, right? So we would never use the reference of a demon because for us, demon always meant evil, right? So right. meaning nothing good was coming out of that. Right. So, and I didn't want to, you know, be a worker for, you know, the devil, Right. Right. Because that goes against self and where I think the world should go, because your idea is that you think the establishment is the devil. So how are you going to be a demon? Right. And so it's counterproductive and counterintuitive to call yourself a demon unless you're saying you are, you know, a, a slave to the devil. Right. A, min a minion. A minion of the devil. Right. And you, so you're an underling. Then then you have to say, you know, well, what is the devil? Because some people believe that the devil is opposite of what conventional idealism paints the devil as, as this angel who broke away because God told him that man was greater than him. And he was like, why should I bow down to something when I, I would have to bow down into mind and not in reality? Because he doesn't believe that the construct of man was greater than the angel. Right. Right. And so people relate to this idealism of the anti-villain, right? And people believe that the devil is an anti-villain in some ways, right? But then when we look at things like... like anti-villain or anti-hero? Anti-hero. So right. Okay. Anti-hero. So, but, and the reality of it is, is that when we look at the morality of the devil and what we believe that you know, represents devils, which is like, you know, child abduction and, you know, um, well, let's people see, who are uh, Luciferian. Yeah. You know, all of that weird Oregon stuff. Augustine, yeah. Yeah. Trafficking, trafficking yeah, things that of that nature. That to me, that's the devil. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the wicked ways of the world that break you down. There's two worlds that's fighting. You know what I mean? And so God is an idea of that which is within to bring outward. It's the force of power, right? It's the force of nature within self when one wants to do things good in a favorable way so that humanity can continue to spread and grow. That to me is God. And the destructive force, right, to me would be the devil, right? But also that same force can be utilized in the sense of, you know, filtering one's actions to know how to weigh one's decisions, right? And so I believe that it's a lack of, understanding what the theologies it's a, it's a looking at you know your rebellion against the church is not a rebellion of god it's a rebellion against an institution right because you know god is not the church god is god the church is supposed to be a place of worshiping god the institutions of america or different governments or these institutions of banks or whatever you want to rebel against these are not god they are forces which one would look at as a god Right. But they're not the God. 
Right. So you don't need to be a demon to go against them. You need to be God to go against them. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's the same thing with AI. They're playing God, but they're not God. Right? So you don't have to work for the devil in order to destroy the system because the systems already work for the devil. Right. And so all they're going to do is be like, all right, you think you're going against me. You actually just playing it to my hands for me. It's as easier. you always have. It actually makes it easier for us to control you. Right. So it's like, no, nah, you got to be on that God body time. You know what I mean? You have to push a line against the things that you don't believe in and stand for the things that you do. Right. But when you don't know what you stand for, you want to do anything by desire. And desire is not where you make demand. Right. You first make demands based on needs. And so we have a generation making demands based on desires. Mm -hmm. So you may get what you desire, but never get what you need. And so in the individual reality, everybody is following their desires and their conjures and their weirdness of the world that they have inside the mind. But there is no mathematics behind it, which means that there's no structure, no foundation, which means you can't build anything with it, mm -hmm. which is why you probably don't want a family because you have nothing to produce, no vision in the mind in the first place. And a family is a factory for the future. Mm -hmm. People focus a lot on nutrition, body wise. You know, I'm going to feed this particular system of the body. I'm going to feed that system. Very rarely do people speak about the mind. Very rarely do speak of, people speak about the brain. The brain needs the most energy, right? The brain is uh, needed to process. The brain is needed to, you know, compartmentalize. The brain is needed for so many things, you know, but we don't know what brain food looks like, you know? We know that the body's electrical, and what I understand about gold is not only is it super conductive, but it's non-corrosive, and it's a noble element. So they say that if I am what I eat, I want to be noble, you know what I'm saying? I want to be of the highest degree, and I also want to focus on mental health, I want to focus on gut health, I want to focus on energy, I want to focus on youth, I want to focus on, uh, you know, accessing uh, pineal activity, hormonal balance, everything the goal represents is what I want to see more of. So what better thing to do but align myself with this particular product and get it out to as many people as I can by singing the praise of gold, which is something that our people have been doing for over 10,000 years. People, this has been a high level conversation. It has been brought to you by Goldwater, right? Some of the greatest new tropics in the world that you can tap into. Me and Blue Pill will be working on a regular show to be able to bring you commentary on all things that are high level, especially when it comes to health, when it comes to the mind, right? Tapping in, you know, providing a frequency that you can tap in more consistently. So whether you're sipping your gold water, tapping into your super mind or your brainstorm coffee, whatever it may be, maybe you're looking through the goggles of these nice spectrums right here on that Crown Society or you got your Crowns hat on or you're listening to, you know, that Black American Guy album, whatever it may be, man, you're tapping in and you're at the highest frequency of life and of self, right? And one thing I want to announce, we're working on getting textbooks and knowledge to the people throughout the world. Um, some is going to be for sale. And we're working with sponsors to help us be able to get this out to the public. Creating textbooks with information that's not conventional, right? And some information that is conventional but not taught in conventional settings such as the school, right? Whether it's finances, whether it's media, whether it's even spiritual things. Because we're so used to learning in a textbook manner, right? That this is some of the best ways for us to learn. Because now you can sit at home and have all this information at home. And then also scan this information, reference it, and do research. But I believe in like family textbooks, but also having these within a school. The skill sets of the future aren't being taught. They have to be learned through experience and developed right now before it's too late. So as you tap in and learn about those things that can help cure you and your family, because I wish I knew what an Iboga root was, you know. I wish the, 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 the people in the goddamn 70s knew what it was and the 60s going through heroin uh, oh, issues right. because they probably would have created a revolution to be able to create facilities to fund the research development of the actual healing processes and take people through these ways of getting off of these addictions by taking them to what's called a pre-addiction state. Mm. And the pre-addiction state is their mind frame before we got addicted. So the whole world has to go through a pre-addiction state 
right? A detachment from the world that is to really go to back to a natural state of who we are, right? And in this natural state of who we are, we can see things, feel, and hear based on the way we're supposed to operate. And then we're making decisions from a non-dependent state, but from a state of evolution and progress, right? Once we're addicted to a thing, it always has more power over you than you have over it. So we have to kill the dependency of technology from an addiction and overindulge standpoint and tap into the spiritual technology so we can get to higher levels of life and living. I'm 19 Keys. This is our good brother, Blue Pill 44. And this has been another high level conversation. I'm 19 Keys and this is high level conversation. Tap in with the dog. Y'all give it up for 19 Keys! Well, we came to support Keys in the movement. I'm here to see 19 Keys. Shout out to 19 Keys. Shout out Keys, man, and everybody that came to this event. Show somebody to 19 something Keys positive. And all Show the speakers leadership. that came today. Hey, The 19 Keys. Highest level tour, high level conversations only. Thank you. High level conversations. High level conversations. Three hour drive, highest level tour. Yes, this is mystery right here, bro. High level conversations, 19 keys. I'm just excited to go to the highest level. The highest level. The highest level. But we on some high level stuff. Changed my life. I'm glad I had it. I got somebody like 19 keys around because a lot of these brothers don't. And I wish they did. We at low level, we at high level. It's my first time here. We out here. <laughs> we, we live in a post-pandemic world. I don't think that there's a lot of ways to ignore that. You know, it has changed the tapestry of, of everything, you know, in society. So two things that we know that we were deceived by is media and medicine. You feel me? So we have to take control of both. But we also have to make observations to say, where were we, you know, what, what, what rewarded us during that time? What aspect of media and medicine actually did work? You know what I mean? And we have the data, we have information that we can go back and research and everything that came out of nature, you know, kind of like outpaced things that were coming out of pharmaceutical settings or big pharma per se. So it has qualified itself to be at the forefront of our conversations especially with, you know, something impending coming down the road, we need to prioritize health. And not only health, we need to look at health as our, you know, our through way to return back to nature. And once we get back into nature and we figure out the fortune that nature affords us, I don't think that we should ever leave. You know, it should start with the herbs, it should start with the health, but we, we should be looking to do a lot more in nature. That's really where our fortune is. I feel that health is the paramount conversation that needs to be had, you know what I mean? Um, if humanity is on the cusp of change and we are at a precipice at this particular time, the thing that we need to make sure that we're guarding most of is the mind and the body. And both of those are in need of natural ingredients, natural suppl supplements, natural, you know, a natural approach in order to retain it in order to entrain it in order to get it back to a place where it's operating at optimum levels destruction has been uh, masterfully marketed us to as a people self-destruction right us acquiescing and participating in the destruction and playing paying full price right <laughs> we go to a club and we pay three times what a cup of hennessy will potentially cost us um and we're 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 getting we're going along with the party where we're a party to our own destruction right so even in a party setting you can see how that plays out so we have to change that conversation we have to incentivize health to be a premium in our communities where it's something that we actually are looking forward what's the reward of health has that been explained right because we speak about you know what the detriments of non-health or, or toxicity y'all but i think the more that we talk about it the more it becomes attractive we should speak about what the rewards of health are right once we prioritize it and we make it something that's aspirational right we're like you know living to 70 is a thing living to 80. i'm saying based on hip-hop you know like 50 should be the standard 
You feel me? 50 crossed the threshold. We saw how Nas looked. You dig what I'm saying? Even though the brother might be selling liquor. <laughs> it still is something that, that is aspirational at this particular point. You're like, oh, that's what looking look, looking like at 50 years? I want to do that. Oh, that's what looking, you know, that's what 70 looks like? We have not emphasized long life. We have not emphasized health in our daily discussions, right? It has not been something that's been a subject that has put, been put in our face. Matter of fact, it's been the opposite. You know what I mean? So we got to change the conversation and the culture. We have to speak on what the incentives are, you know, by doing right by yourself, for self. You know, we have to overemphasize, especially to the men in our community, what being there for your child and your family looks like. You know what I'm saying? As well as being wholesome for your woman, you know? So when we reintroduce what these incentives are, and we get on, you know, a campaign that can rival with the, the marketing of death has been, I think that that will start turning the tide. Also, we we see that we have crossed the threshold, right? And the threshold that we have crossed is that, you know, we have access to, there's so many, there's, there's an entire movement that's being had now, even through the pharmaceutical industry, where they are emphasizing being more youthful, right? They have an entire industry that has popped up where they're coming up with synthetic pills, right? I think Quincy Jones takes 150 a day because he wants to live to be 100. So we see society is shifting towards a trend where they are prioritizing youth, okay? What we're saying is that if we have the ways and means in which we're able to find it, once again, to do it naturally, then that should be the emphasis, right? We should be youthful body and youthful minded without being necessarily thinking like children, right? There's a difference, you know what I'm saying? You can have the mentality of a man, a grown man, you can have the mentality of a God, but why not have the body of an immortal, right? And these things are accessible during this period in time. Science has done the research you feel me and these particular um modalities are accessible so i think that it's very important that we utilize them and we incentivize it when people see me and they be like yo you look like you aging backwards right away they want to know you know what i'm saying where can i get the gold water and gold in particular as i explained num on numerous occasions the reason why the Fountain of Youth was connected and correlated with them searching for the city of gold is that gold as an element, it helps repair damaged DNA, right? And it also helps tighten skin. So this is the elixir of youth. This is the Fountain of Youth. When they came here to the Americas, they were looking for gold. They were looking for the Fountain of Youth. You know what I'm saying? And we got it for you right here. You dig what I'm saying? So why not push that information and push that line on stand on that? Who wouldn't want to be younger? You know, um, I, as I've crossed the threshold, you know, and, and I'm edging towards a particular age, like I said, seeing Nas and seeing these other, you know, brothers that are out there that are 50 years old and they're making it look so glorious, you know what I mean? And, and they look so youthful. They look so full of life. Yes, I think that that should be the standard in our community. That should be the standard in our culture. We should be moving towards looking more youthful and being more energetic and you know our lasting legacy should be one in which we say you know we're gonna be 100 we're gonna be 120 i want to be 150 and it all starts now you know i, I actually wanted to talk more um <laughs> me and blue pill conversations are really organic i really wanted to talk even more about like different herbs plants new tropics so i feel like in order for us to go there because when we jump into one good topic it just becomes this long stream of thought and it'd be thoughts that i normally don't get to have because talking to blue pill you get to have a conversation of a decade right and i can't have that same time of conversation with everybody where it's like a super flow so i know when i come and sit down with blue pill we're decoding and right now things need to be decoded because they're throwing so much at us Right. And I really wanted to have that conversation where it's about finding sanity in a world that's crazy. 
because it's a crazy world outside man things do not make sense and we can always make sense out of those things but for the most part you know we're trying to fine tune and adjust what we think about world in order for us to be sane and and go about our daily you know uh, bouts but as i go through the world i'll be thinking and i'll be seeing stuff observations news new technology shifts i'm like man this stuff i can only imagine what it's doing to the average mind who's just trying to find some peace so it's good to be able to listen to some stimulating conversation that you don't have to agree with anything you you don't even have to like it just sit down and think right and if we can get people to think it's harder to get those people controlled and when thinking you know you can decrease a lot of your issues and problems because you can think through them it's not the type of thinking where we want you to have repetitive cycle thoughts that create consistent stress it's the type of thinking where it's like oh huh now i understand it i can move past it Right. And I think when I sit with Blue Pill, he always helped me decode the phenomenons of society and reality. And by allowing people to sit in this conversation in this day and age, especially coming off the one we had last time, which is highly like esoteric. You know, this one was really dealing with a lot of mainstream issues and societal issues and future issues. Right. Um, I think this is going to be one of those ones that people can be like, you know what? I didn't have time to really analyze those things that y'all were talking about. But now that I do, I have my thoughts that I'm prepared to utilize to move forward. So health is a huge topic because mental health will continue to rise. The mental health issues, I should say, will continue to rise. The brain health issues will continue to rise. The body from a mental body dysphoria right of never feeling uh perfect of never feeling good enough right will continue to rise and without this ability to sit back and love yourself right you're going to be pulling from these personality types and developing these character traits that are against your own progress and it's going to continue to stir us in the direction of where we destroy ourselves by trying to amplify ourselves, not understanding that we were born evolved. We were born already correct. We were born the right way. We were born with the right thinking. We were born, you understand me, with the right body and the right mind and the right eyes and the right ears and the right everything. And if we can understand how valuable it is to even be born in this time and to be born as we are to learn how to love ourselves i think that's a much more important lesson for society than the makeup than you know the new bodies we get or the the cars that we get or the clothes that we put on it's like love yourself from your nakedness you know what i mean from an exterior standpoint and from an interior standpoint and look how powerful you become because you can't be manipulated when you know who you are you can't be manipulated when you love yourself right it's the doubt the insecurities the fears the worries the stresses that that's where they are able to sneak in that back door and start to manipulate you based on those pains and frequencies so and at the same time it's about creating new codes right and not just decoding but let me give you new codes so we talked about that tau male that tall male right or that sigma male right and we start to look at these characteristics of you know different you know personality and archetypes and it's like understand uh, why things are the way they are for me it's like i don't want to be an alpha particularly that's at the core of who i am based on my energy right but it's more complicated than that it's more not even complicated it's more complex than that i would say right i'm not just a leader right no i'm different i'm a philosopher Right. I'm not just a thought leader. Right. You know, I'm a, I'm a master student. Right. I'm a brother. I like to see myself different than the titles that the world has already prepared for me because I don't think they fit. Right. The thinking, the logic and the feel of who I am and what I do. So I don't want to stupefy the complexity of who I am in this day and age because they haven't created the proper words to express the codes that I live by. And so let me give you new codes, codes that are more befitting to where we're going and who we are, right? And I think that, you know, this is the signal, right? Allowing myself even having success in this world is a signal.
And the thing about time is you can't take it back, right? I'm here at this point in day and age and everything that we've done, every success we had, it will never be taken away from nobody. I mean, from, from me or you, you have the memories. We know that society reacts a certain type of way when a man stands and move a certain type of way. So now you know that is a code. When we see women and men stand up and do those things that we know are fitting for the future that we want to see, those are new codes and they can't take those codes away. No matter what happens, this is the beauty of our ancestral codes that they left behind. Every time we watch them, we watch the new code being entered into the algorithm that we can choose, right? to scan and, and become carbon copies of that if we want to, and we fitting that this is a super code for us to tap in, right? For me, I want to be a super code for the next generation to be like, hmm, I don't move how Key's moved in this. I'm going to think how he th thought in this. As these algorithms allow you to transfer data onto your own, you know, mindset and to tap into the patterns of other individuals, I want mine to be a super set of data for those who want to tap into that God code. I was so impressed you know when there were uh grown women in particular uh, mothers you know what i'm saying who were coming to me and speaking about the fact that their children that are 18 19 and 20 you know are, are tapped in and listening to the information and they're able to see themselves and and us and our narrative and our stories you know and our the way to you know, we uphold and present ourselves. So knowing that children in their developmental stages are utilizing this information for personal self-development and transformation, you know what I'm saying? These things are the things that matter most. And even when I run into the elders in the community and they also express the fact that they feel so delighted that the torch is still being carried this is one of the reasons that i got into the information um i was asked from an elder of mine dr reverend phil valentine you know to bring more youth to the message you know what i'm saying and to not let this information die with the the, the elders you know what i'm saying so this has given me the ability to look into my own mirror to see that you know that that aspects of the job have been completed and there's still more aspects of the job that just have got started that need to be completed you know what i mean um one of the things that i want to overemphasize is that I, I didn't wake up like this either you know what i'm saying so this conversation you know it, it begins and it concludes on a high level but i want to speak to you on a high level if you're out there and you have made mistakes in life you know what i'm saying it's not over for you it's never over. You could be 40, you could be 50, you could be 60, right? There's still an opportunity for you to renew your contract on life. And that's just you sitting with yourself and saying the time is now. I don't care if you have attempted, you know, 50, 60 times, right? At centering yourself, you feel me? It's never over until it's over, right? So there's always an opportunity to start over and get back into the into the into the swing of things you know what i mean i didn't wake up like this i went through a lot of trials and tribulations to to get myself to a particular place where i can be obedient to my own higher calling you feel me and you you can discipline yourself and gain that access too none of this information is outside of your reach you feel me none of it is outside of your reach none of it is over your head do not think that we're speaking over your head or we're speaking, you know, to a to a place where you even have to worship what's being said or worship the people that it's coming from. You are your own leader. You feel me? This information is accessible to you. It's yours, as much yours as it is as, as it is ours. The only difference is we prepared ourselves, we did the research, you feel me? And then it, it lives in our hearts. So you don't see us reading notes and things of that nature because we we live it we we have embodied these principles you know what i'm saying so challenge yourself to embody these principles you feel me i need you to be a leader in your own space i need you to be a leader in your own home i need you to be a leader in your community i need you to be a leader you know what i'm saying for your children ultimately
Peace, family. If you want to see us at the highest level, if you want to see us at the top of the podcast charts, <laughs> this is the way you can help, not just with your views and your attention. First of all, I want to thank you for being here, listening, watching, sharing, but we also need you to comment. This is how support looks like. I need you to comment the best thing you liked about the episode or the worst thing. It's up to you, whatever you would like to share. Then I need you to go and put in them five stars. Go to Apple's, go to Spotify's, go everywhere. And I need to see them testimonials. And I need you to go on Apple and Spotify and download and subscribe. The more downloads we get, the better we able to do in business. And the more we can grow this high level media. Again, I want to thank you all for supporting. Thank you all for tapping in. If you want to book, the booking email is 19keys at 19keys.com. Tap in.